Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum ya suhaib. Wa alaikum assalam. So today we start with ayah number 23, but let's go through some comments first and some questions that were asked. Uh, the first comment that you sent me that was rather depressing. Let's start with that one, just so we clarify oh. some things. Okay, so somebody was saying, I think you're talking more about Arabic language and grammar. Rather, use simple translations so common people can understand those who are in Arabic language. Your other translations are much easier. I find it difficult in terms of understanding. May Allah make it easy for us to understand. I mean, I mean, uh, so yeah, I kind of my, my job is to make the Arabic of the Quran easier to understand uh, in translation, khutbahs, durus, and things like that. But this is actually not that kind of session. This is for those that are interested in figuring out how do you translate and what happens behind the scenes. So if you're finding this intimidating, that's okay. It's actually, it wasn't designed for everyone. A lot of people also ask, why did we have a registration for this uh, and send a link out? Why not just broadcast to the public? Because exactly for this reason, there's lots of folks that are not, you know, Arabic students or enthusiasts or that, you know, they're not looking for the mechanics behind translation. And they're, uh, the, the stuff I usually put out on social media, YouTube, Facebook, anything else, that's for everybody's consumption, but this isn't, uh, which is why. So I just wanted to quickly comment on that. Uh, Yasin, there are questions outstanding from yesterday, if any. Um, okay. So there are a few that were sent uh, to me. Okay. Summarize from this. Um, so some of them we, I mean, we talked about directly. So, you know, of course, sometimes people can miss the point, but uh, I don't want to go over things that we already did discuss and explain. Okay. But maybe things that we didn't. Um, why not God instead of master? I mean, because Rab, Rab not doesn't the word we use for God, but yeah. the word Ilah, uh, maps onto God. Yeah. Um, that's the first set. Let me just see some more. I want a strong team. Um, I guess that would be okay. We're just trying to be as brief and, and less wordy as possible. So uh, team is, I think it's, it suffices, but strong team, I wouldn't be too against it, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, clearly our father's lost in delusion. What's the most clearly deluded? I mean, so I would say, first of all, a lot of the comments in the um, in the comment section are just like other words that people throw in. So I don't mind that people have suggestions and ideas, but what we don't want is, for example, you just because you heard another word or you're familiar with another translation, so you just paste it in. Yeah. Right. So if you want to suggest, I would request that you also give some rationale for why you feel that this one might be better. Right. So right. that we can consider the reasoning along with the reasoning that we've already engaged in. Yeah. And we could say, okay, maybe you've got a point here. Right? Otherwise, we may not see your point. You may have a great point, and we don't see it because you just threw in expressions, clearly deluded. Right? So what? So clearly deluded, though, there is a Balaghi consideration. We were trying to capture the impact of the fi in fi balad and mubin, right. as opposed to bal, you know, bal and mubin or something like that. Yeah. Uh, or bal and mubin. So, like... The fee sort sort of illustrates rhetorically an immersion mm. into a state, like in the insana la fi as opposed to in the insana la khasib, right? Mm. So, um, which is why we thought that in English it's a good way to encapsulate that drowning in delusion with the word lost in delusion mm. or immersed in delusion. Yeah. Someone said, uh, "Well wishers, no one says that anymore." I actually I see it. So yeah. I mean that that can be quite a relative thing, you know, whether something is obsolete, or, you know, it's yeah. going to vary from country to country, age to age. There's an, another thought, like you could say, I'm, I'm a well wisher to this person, or I wish them well, I mean well for them, but those are all very wordy and long. Mm. So it, the challenge is also picking something that's concise. Um, and also, you can say we are, uh, we wish him well. Yeah. But inna lahuna nasihun. Uh, it's a bit stronger than that. Um, yeah, so it's actually defining themselves as they're not just. It's so let's just compare this. If you say, I wish you well, then you're talking about in this moment, I wish you well, right? Mm -hmm. If you say, I am your well wisher, 
you're actually characterizing yourself as someone who's always been that way and will continue to be that way. And it's not just a comment about what's happening in the moment. So the, the use of the noun creates um, an attribution to the person. Uh, you know, so for example, I'm teaching you as opposed to I'm your teacher is different. I'm teaching you, teaching you right now. I'm your teacher means we have a longstanding relationship and I've defined myself as such. So that's, these are the subtle things that we kind of take into account when we choose one phrasing over the other. I mean, I, would, I, could, I could critique our translation, say the his gives, you know, nasihuhu, for example. Right. Whereas it could be well wishes to him is a bit more precise mm -hmm. and, you know, not much less eloquent than his well wishes. In yeah. Fact, possibly is better. We are well wishers to him. Yeah. We are well wishers to him. Yeah. I think that could that would improve it slightly and and and, and be closer to some of the specifics of the ayah as well. Yeah, sure, I'll take um, that. Even though we need well to throw him out, so, you know, okay. So, um, how about while you're not paying attention to him, while you're neglecting him? I mean, again, so if you're just going to give a synonym, the question is why would we swap one for the other? That's what I'm asking you to. He's give us he, he's straight up mean about that kind of stuff. Like I I try to like couch it with like it's a good suggestion we can think now he's like why don't you give your reasons what am i just going to no, take your word what, what i mean is just, look uh, translations in general a lot of times the difference between one translation and another is just the choice of which word in english says the exact same meaning yeah so if there's a sense that one of them could be better then we want to try to understand why why is it better? better otherwise it's just equivalent not paying attention to him while you're neglecting him are roughly the same yeah there's some thought process you didn't necessarily hear all of the thought process that went into us selecting the word we selected. What did we select again? Neglecting him. Mm. Um, whereas we, we maybe felt this could be, give us stronger sense of their general. Yeah, uh, and, and ghafla and neglect are a lot closer than ghafla and not paying attention. Mm. I mean, in plenty yeah. of places, not paying attention would be is perfectly fine. It might even work here. as a figurative translation. Even yeah. Here it's fine as well. Yeah. Yeah. But again, see if you can make an argument for why something might be better, then we can take that into consideration. Yeah. Like it. Um, I know that transparency makes the translations on the screen a little less legible to read. This was an experiment. Hopefully we can address that today. If not by the next broadcast, you guys will see it. So are are there other comments um, before we start today's work? So yeah, I brought blood on the shirt. That's a bit unclear, at least in English. So I think we acknowledge that. We, we, yeah. we recognize that the wording um, does invite a pause and a little bit of thought because, uh, because you could word it in an easier way, but you, you would miss something of the specifics of the, the way the ayah presents. It was deliberately situation. worded this way in Arabic too. Like it's not the straightest mm. phrasing in the Arabic, causing the reader to actually, or listener to, stop and ponder about what was just said and we're trying to capture some of that complexity when we're not going for a simpler version mm -hmm. Shasweb? Okay. He's trying to get your attention Would act virtuously be good for Ihsan? Can indeed be, yes. To try to achieve excellence. So people again, uh, is, these are these are suggestions which are all uh, good. But um, any other like language related questions other than alternative suggestions for translation? I think that's what we've got. Okay. So we can move forward, inshallah. We're gonna start with aya number 24 today. Uh, 23. 23. Sorry, okay. 23. 23. So we have some of the rationale uh, mentioned here, and then we have some more eyes that we already translated. Let me see. Where we just have to write the right rationale. Here. So, oh, I don't have it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have that here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So, and so well, I'll say it verbally. And the woman whose house he was in tried to have him give himself to her. So let's break this up a little bit. 
the woman whose house he was in. That's where, how we had to start it because the Jumla Fi'liya, complex as it is, Alati Hua Fi Baitiha is the subject. You know, the, and, and the object is who. Hmm. So we, and it, it's convention to go with the subject first in English. So the woman whose house he was in makes sense first. Then the verb itself, tried, tried to have him give himself to her is probably the, we, we wrestled with a few possibilities here because it is a complex verb. But I think this captures a good set, good amount of what was intended by Rawada and then making him the mafrul bihi. So in general, people translate this as seduced or sought to seduce. And mm. rawada in form three, you know, fa'ala, yeah. often has this sense of attempting to do something like yukhadi'oon Allah, right. they try to deceive Allah, for example. Yep. Um, so generally you find attempted to seduce, someone has sought to make himself yield. That's close to what we said, yeah. Yeah. Um, so to suggest, so this is all fine in terms of getting to the meaning, yeah, right. But I think one of the things that made us think more carefully about the specifics of the wording is that later in the same surah, in ayah 61, they say, Qalu anhu abahu. Yeah, so over there, I'm going to check the translations now, but I don't think anyone's going to use the word seduce when the brothers of Yusuf are going to say. That we're going to get Binyamin away from his dad. His dad, yeah. Right. So let me see if anyone uses the word seduce. No, nobody, right? So of course it's possible that Murawada here, Murawada there, you give a different translation. Correct. No problem with that. But we felt like, okay, within the same surah, would it be good to have a way of expressing it that would make a unified sense of murawada tying this word to that like an anchor that's been created inside of the surah yeah so when we looked into the uh the etymology of it and the sense of it it was trying to get someone to give something up yeah so nurawidu anhu abahu nurawidu abahu we are going to get his father to give to give him over to give binyamin over yeah anhu so, so there's the two objects part, yeah who are you snatching from mm -hmm. and what are you snatching? That's the direct thing. And the what you're snatching is the an. The an, right. So then if you apply this to the ayah, وَرَوَدَتْهُ عَن نَفْسِهِ Right. She's trying to get him to give up his nafs. Yes. Right. Or himself, in other words. So that's why we translated it. And the woman whose house he was in it's loaded tried term. to have him give himself to her. Hmm. And sure, it's not the most concise and it's not the clearest but we wanted to bring something out of the way that this idea is conveyed in the ayah yeah so if our sole mission was let's be as clear and concise and simple as possible that's not what we would have written yeah and you and your durus you know you'll certainly use things and uh, while you're talking to make things easier and simpler that's you. I have a lot more t opportunity to talk into this, right? I have a lot more mm. opportunity to explain myself and go into details and go into the etymology. We're not doing that in translation. We have a few words to get across a lot. So we have to pack that in, right? Mm. She made sure to lock all the doors. So we went with the taf'il form, which is mubalagha to maybe perhaps stress the act itself. Yeah, right? so th this is a tricky one as to whether the shadda has this effect. So a number of the Mufassirin do say so. Mm. But the fact is, um, you've got aghlaqa and ghallaqa are both ways of expressing locking. the transitive meaning of locking something. Right. So it's not necessarily the case that one is somehow more emphatic than the other or involves takthir. Takthir is, to say, referring to many doors or perhaps many locks. Some of them said, you know, she, there was many locks on the door. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe just with some sense that the, the, the use of غلقه rather than أغلقه might have some effect of, of you know, increasing the, you know, heightening the sense of it. Yeah. You're taking that influence. We said we, she made sure. She made sure to lock all the doors. وقالت هيتلك mm. Get over here, scorpion. So, is that a reference to uh, what? One, one. Uh, yeah. It is Mortal Kombat. Yes, very good. I only know because uh, because once upon a time, 
<laughs> We've discussed this before. Uh, so she made sure to lock all the doors and said, get over here. Now, Haitalak is, you know, very intriguing phrase as to, you know, the, 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 the origins of it and the different qiraat of it and all sorts of things. But what we get here is the, the essential point is to call someone over. Yeah. And some say, you know, at the core of it is something like, I'm ready for you. Yeah. You know, so there's different possibilities in the translation here as well. Mm. What have some others done in Haitalak? Um, come hither. Uh, sounds like come a... along with the come, just come by itself. Uh, we have got come forward. We have got, well, someone said, I'm all yours. Oh, come forward sounds really different now. Come here, you. We have got come here. It is you I address. Hmm. So the luck, I suppose, it is you, I come you. So yeah, a few varieties of, of the same things. Hmm. Um, I am yours, some have said. So that in the, they took that other implication. To lak, tahiyat to lak. Yeah. Also, it's, you could be influenced by which qira'a, you know, haytalak is the one that we, you know, took as the basis for the translation. Yeah. Yeah. So, qala ma'at Allah. I love this. I cling to God for safety. Hmm. Yep. Yep. So, a'udhu ma'at Allah. This is an etymology issue here. Yep. Because it's it's mansub, it's calling on the mustar. Um, so the fi'il, the verb is implied, and auz actually has to do with clinging. Uh, trellises that cling to the bark of a tree or or the meat, meat that uh, clings the to bone. the bone. Yeah. yeah. So mm. the so I cling to God, uh, and you do so for safety is implied in the usage of the of the word. So when folks say, I seek refuge, we use the phrasing, I, I seek refuge. It captures the meaning of seeking that protection, but it doesn't capture the clinging aspect of the word. So I think I cling to God for safety is really beautiful. Mm. Uh, my master has made my life good here. So here, grammatically, there's a couple of possibilities. Yeah. So we understood stood the innahu as uh, as often said by the Mufassirin, as being with Damiru Shatan. Right. So that's to say, it is the case that, right? Yeah. Rather than, you could say, innahu rabbi, where you're saying ismu inna as originally the Mubtada. Yeah. He is my master. So we chose Possible. not to really translate Damiru Shatan, which I, I wonder if we could have. Not just it is the case that, but there are other ways of... Yeah. So, so the, the, the notion of Lamiro Sha'an is before you say the sentence, you are bringing attention to what you are about to say. Mm. So, you know, the fact is, and then you say something. Or the thing is, and you say something, right? That's what we do in normal English nowadays, right? Mm. Or actually, and, but these are all different in different contexts. And they may all translate into inna hu. Mm -hmm. So it's the same wording in Arabic, but they're contextually actually, and the thing is, or what happened is, or the fact of the matter is, the truth is, mm -hmm. are all there. None of them seem to fit cleanly here because it doesn't make sense for her to say, actually, my master is taking, that's not the situation, mm -hmm. right? So what we could say is the, the inna, if we see it as something like tali. So if, along the lines of, I cling to God for safety, for, for my master has made my life good here. Or if, if, if well, much more modern English because my master. Uh, yes, of course, because it's the more, it's just it's more explicit kind of ta'alil than, yeah. yeah. For, for inna is a kind of ta'alil, but a soft ta'alil. Yeah. I'm making up a term that you won't find in any uh, nahu book, soft ta'alil. Yeah. Lower ta, lower case ta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a perspective on, on how, you know, the extent to which it indicates that ta'alil. So uh, I do feel that we could improve on this by incorporating the the fact that the Lamir Shatin is used. Yeah, since so we I, I might even throw this out to the audience. Like the, the sense of the Lamir Shatin here is I will never forget that. And the truth that is glaring in front of you and me is that. Mm. So the, this is what the innahu, the effect of it is in this context. But I don't know how to get that across with concise language in English that reminds him of this reality and reminds her of this reality 
uh, in that way as a qualifier to what he's about to say. It's almost like saying, you may have forgotten, but I will never forget that my master mm -hmm. is has been good to me. This is the kind of thing that's embedded in the in the, which mm -hmm. we're, we're 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 stuck with not translating right now. Uh, it's it's because any one of those is too verbal, and not concise enough. And Inna who is just really beautiful and concise. Mm -hmm. So, and then Rabbi here we have thought about. You know, we've we've written master with a capital M. Right, and then we don't have this ayah for on the on screen. This... Maybe is it twenty four? Twenty three? No, twenty three. They didn't give me. Or maybe I didn't send it. That could be my fault. Yeah. So, um, my master has made my life good here. We put a capital M for my master, hmm. and then we put in the footnote or with a small M for the Aziz because nice. the fact that it can refer to both is surely one of the intended things in the Absolutely. surah. And, and, and there are a number of places where we certainly feel that the duality is very, very much intended. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is one of those places. So that's why we didn't use nurturing master as we do for Rabb because that would make it exclusively mm. for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the mm. possibility that this is um, the, the, the man of the house is still very much present. So anyway, so I cling to God for safety. My master has made my life good here in the Rabbi. Ahsana Maswaya. In Nahu La Yuflihu Dalimu. Now the other Lamiru Shah. In Nahu La Yuflihu Dalimu. So so we have we have captured here those who do wrong will never get what they want. And maybe the truth is and you know yeah. Or some something along those lines. I, I I'm not so sold on the truth is either. I think I think the never we probably put because of trying to get something of that. Ah, okay, effect. yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is this is part of our methodology. Those who do wrong will never get what they want. It became a general rule. Yeah, and that was that general rule aspect came from the Dhamir Rishan from, from Innahu. Yeah. So that points towards the way that we do things. So we see what's the general effect of this, and then. What would be a way to get the idea into the English? This is sentence? a problem with translation. It's, it's uh, sometimes science and sometimes art. <laughs> we have to tread the line between the two of them. So the effect of innahu is not being communicated here grammatically, but it's being communicated here in more creative ways with the use of never. Okay. Okay. So... All right, so 24. I do have that one. So we said, La oh, we skipped this. Mm -hmm. We'll never get what they want. Uh, so we went with iflah mm -hmm. as reaching harvest. Yeah. Right? Harvesting crop, which is the end result, which is from which we get the idea of succeed. Mm -hmm. So getting what you want in the end. And so we went with the the, the essence of uh, falah as opposed to foes uh, in the ayah. And we're, we're trying to capture that and they will never get what they want. And I suppose that choice brings it more into the story that, you know, you, you, you want, and we, we're going to see this word used in the, uh, the, the translation of the next ayah, right? She wanted him for sure. Yeah. So maybe we were thinking of that. Mm. And she she tried to get to have him give himself to her. So she wanted him. That's yeah. already, you understand that from what came before. Yeah. But la yuflihu, you know, can be, will never succeed. You know, cheaters never prosper or something like that. Right. But here it's like, you're trying to get something, but you're trying to do it in a wrong way. And if you go about it in this wrong way, what you're seeking in reality, whether it be love, intimacy, whatever, you will never really get to experience the sweetness of that because you're doing it in a way which is illicit, illicit and illegitimate. So I think that's the, what becomes bro more broadly understood from we'll never get what they want rather, yeah. than, rather, than, rather than we'll never succeed. succeed right. Because succeed is like makes you think only about things like the akhira and you know final accomplishment and getting a medal or something like that. Right. Um, We'll so there's a duality it. here. Yeah, brings it into the story a bit more clearly. وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ She mm. wanted him for sure. The for sure is for the وَلَقَدْ in the beginning. Maybe we should use and here. 
What do you think? I think we, we may have removed it because of the subsequent and and the difficulty in English. Mm. And he would have wanted her wahamma biha low. So he would have Lola. because of the low. Lola. Yeah, Lola. Had he not seen his master's convincing proof, convincing proof being Burhan, Burhan Rabbihi. Uh, we did we did it that way. What is the ayah? Let's see. Kadalika. Dinasrifa an husu, isn't it? Uh, and so كذلك لي, we did it that way يعني كذلك فعلناه لي mm-hmm. so there's an implication there there's there's in our rules for how we translate we take into account the implied verbs that are obvious and don't have to be stated in the Arabic but sometimes are needed in the English so we're taking that step here so um, we're saying we did it that way. So even though the the Arabic does not say we did it that way, it just says that way. Mm. Okay. So uh, that way to steer evil, uh, to steer evil and indecent. Okay, to steer evil and indecency away from him. So su evil, and then fahsha indecency. I like both of those translations because he was one of our own purified slaves. And the because, because inna, this time we went with more explicit, mm. because he was one of our own purified slaves. Oh, there's a page I was looking for. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking everywhere, <laughs> except under your nose. Almost had it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we turn away evil and obscenity from him. Um, that's nice. No. So of course here in the Lawla there's there's a extensive discussion in the tafsirs. Yeah. Um so there's two ways that grammatically this could play out. So she wanted him for sure and he wanted her. Yeah, so there's two types of hams. But it the ham is coming from both directions. There is a ham from her and a ham from him. Mm-hmm. And ham is something like desire or intent or something of this nature. Right. So the Mufassirin, if they read it in this way, then they explain, well, there's a difference between her type and his type. Right. Okay, because for the most part, they did not attribute anything uh, of, of you know, indulging in any level of the uh, obscene act to him. Although, you know, there were some of the Mufassirin who did record such things and such narrations and it came into play. Mm. But for the most part, if they read it this way, they still had an explanation. Well, قَدَ هَمَّتْ بِهِ Wahamma biha is a little bit lighter in the way it's expressed. It. Right. And that ham, they say, it's like if you were out in a hot summer's day and you saw a refreshing glass of ruafsa. You know ruafsa? You, know ruafsa. you don't like it? I'd stay thirsty. Sorry, uh, of, I can't of, do ruafsa. Nice rose water drink. That's what Imam Razi gives the example. Then, of course, you're fasting. It's hot. You see the cold drink. You want to drink it, but you're fasting, so you don't. Right, so that level of ham may be attributed without any uh, any blameworthiness. Yeah, and any violation, therefore, of of that statement of his maqam as a nabi. So that's one possibility. But others said, no. What's happening here is there's actually a, a break in the sentence. The fact of the matter is, she desired him. Full stop. Yeah. biha laula. Right. Uh, he would have, that's the way we translate, he would have wanted her had he not seen. For the first group, the lawla gives us a kind of new sentence. He did desire her on some level. And were it not for the fact that he saw this proof, then something would have happened. He would have acted on it. So The only problem I have with that reading is then that that lawla can actually get attributed to her also. Like if you com- consider that... Mm. Consider that a whole new sentence. But walaqad takes away the possibility that it's a conditional. It could just be ma'atufan. Once you have walaqad hammat bihi. And You're I, saying it's not shatiyah. I have, I have a, a paper which is called A Tale of Two Lawlas. I discuss this lawla and then the one in Ayah 94 we're going to come to. 
قال إني لا أجد ريح يوسف لولا أن تفندون because of لا أجد okay إني لا أجد yeah so then he's saying I certainly do detect therefore it's not conditional it can be conditional but a lot of the translators in fact pretty much they went straight for the shot they 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 made it okay I would sense or I would say that I sense but he just said it إني لا أجد ريح so there's no doubt right okay okay so the I get you now so لولا أن تفندون then has to have a جواب that is after it so when we come to it you know inshallah we'll get to that story it's a really 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 good one good point you make but here ولقد همت به can't be conditional definitely she did but وهم بها allows for this now for the most part this is company with the lamb ولا هم بها لولا Hmm. So mostly if it is the jawab of the lawla in meaning, you would have a lam wala hamma biha. Lawla al ra'a burhan rabbihi la hamma biha. Normally there would have been two lams, you mean? Normally. Oh no, the jawab would have had lam. The jawab would have had lam. Right. However, it also can work without the lam. As Mufasirun say, you know, it can work this way. Hmm. But you know, you might expect a lam in. Then it would be definitely as the job of Laula. Uh, so my point of view about this is the openness of the sentence to the two possibilities, ways of reading it means that in a way there is ambiguity, not in order to throw any uh, doubt on the intentions and the, uh, and the, um, and the chastity yeah. of Yusuf, but in order to say, look, any one, any one of us can be presented with a situation. And one might experience a type of desire or a type of temptation. And are we going to say the prophets are not presented with that? Of course, he's presented with that as a test. And even some of the Mufassirun said that the point of saying it in this way was so that we don't also think, well, Yusuf actually... It was, was impossible for him. He to was have. literally an angel. Right. Or even something uh, worse, in a sense, you know, some human beings don't have desire. That's not a praiseworthy trait, right? You know, somebody does not does not have desire. It's not something we, we praise them for. Lacking something of a basic function of the human uh, condition, being, yeah. right? Although there are people like that, and there's no blame on them for being, for example, asexual, whatever, right? But the point is to suggest that Yusuf Islam was this is not a point of praise, right? Right. The point of praise is that he's a human being. He feels. And he uh, holds himself in the highest of dignity. So, in the end, the translation we've chosen goes one way, and that is the nature of translation. For the most part, you've got to you've got to choose a side in how you see the the words. Yeah. So, and he would have wanted her had he not seen his master's convincing proof. Now, Burhan Rabbi has a lot of discussion around this as well as to what does it refer to. There are different riwayat, and you know, for example, he saw a vision of his father of Yaqub yeah. biting on his nails and saying, "Don't do this." Or he saw Jibril, or you know, Jibril came to him and kicked him on the back and said, "You know, what are you doing?" Right. So riwayat go in all sorts of directions, but these are not things that have to be depended on. You know, the Mufassirun may mention by way of trying to illustrate possibilities. But had he not seen his master's convincing proof, the way that we took it, and therefore the translation points towards, is that um, maybe we even say, had he not already seen, right? Because the way that we understood this is, this is something which is already imbibed in terms of what he knows about right and wrong, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided him, yeah. has given him that sense of, uh, of conscience has given him that moral compass has given him that certainty let's, in the time when of temptation let's arises. take a more three-dimensional view as we arrive at that already he's uh been taken to egypt uh he's now a servant in the house of the master uh that means that he does serve but also means that he lives among the, the servants he has no parental oversight he has no religious oversight he has no moral oversight mm. he's free to do as he pleases in a society and he's a young man um and from what we can tell he's extremely good looking also so it's not like temptation hasn't presented itself or isn't all around him in a God, non-god fearing mm. society of which he has been a part for a while uh and yet he has held himself to a standard which is captured in 
as in he already saw the burhan of his rab there's a he understands in the shaytan al-insani bin this is the ultimate test of that where he's being like it's one thing to for a, a man to stay away from such temptation it's another for a woman to throw herself at him and he's still holding himself back so it's the ultimate test of that same burhan so had he not been continuously carrying himself. And I, I think that lends us to a really beautiful lesson here too. Uh, maybe there's better words for it, but resistance training. Mm. In other words, he's carried, he's been able to resist temptation and been able to carry himself in a dignified fashion all this time, which builds up his immunity to such things. You know, the more you put mm. yourself in compromising situations and you're not protective of yourself, the less your ability to hold back. So perhaps the, all of that is captured in just the لَوْلَا أَرْرَأَ بُرْحَانَ رَبِّهِ I'm seeing a good question on your screen there. So Abu Bakr has asked, are we understand Rab, Rab here is uh-huh. referring to Allah or will we go to nurturing master again? Good question. Um, actually, no. I, I, what I misunderstood from your question is a good question. So the question is, could the Rab be referring to the, the master? To the, house. The, to the Aziz. Yeah. So that's another way that the ayah has been understood. That had he not seen some evidence of his master, so he was about to maybe think about possibly doing something, and then he saw the Aziz's hat, something like mm. that, on the on the coat rack, and then he, he remembered the Aziz, and he thought, well, this is somebody else's wife. So that is a way that some of the Mufassirin have taken it as well, or they expressed it as a possibility. Mm. For me, uh, and, and again, this is something which, you know, uh, there's long, long discussions among Mufassirin. Sometimes I will summarize it and say, you know, for me, it's like this, but it doesn't mean that also this is my analysis solely. I might myself just be copying something that Mufassirin said yeah. already in response to that. Because they say, Rabbihi, he's not really his Rabb, right? It's like his Rabb Majazan. Yeah. So for Allah to refer to him, as his Rabb, this is Allah's words, not a quote. So for oh. him to say, is to affirm that that uh, man of the house is the Rabb of Yusuf. And this seems unlikely. As for Yusuf saying in some uh, bits of conversation, uh, as for uh, uh, Yusuf Islam saying in some uh, pieces of conversation, that oh, my master or something of this nature, then that can be just understood like by way of how they uh, were talking in that society and based on the kind of presumption or the uh, assumption that, okay, he is a slave. In fact, mm. Yusuf Al-Islam was not genuinely a slave, but he had been enslaved. Well, there's no such thing as a genuine slave in reality. Right. But he was a prophet, you know, and the position of a prophet cannot coexist with, uh, uh, with enslavement. Um, and he was from the family of Yaqub. So the point is, uh, these possibilities exist, but we have to see what seems stronger what according seems stronger. to the position of the Mufassirin. And, uh, and that, so we, we acknowledge the duality, but we maintained um, the capital M here. Mm. And obviously nurturing wouldn't work for Aziz. Okay. We did it that way to steer evil and indecency away from him. You talked about this already. It's not steering him away from evil and indecency, but it's that way around. Right. Innahu, they're because we've got here for the ta'lil, because yeah. he was one of our own purified slaves. Uh, this also from, from, a, from, a, mm. from a continuity point of view, Rab and then Ibad works really well together when attributed to Allah here in the ayah. Mm. So, لَوْلَا أَنْ رَأَى بُرْحَانَ رَبِّهِ إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا المخلصين. So Rabb and Abd, the mm. contrast is a nice, it's iltifad towards the singular um, or to the, to the first person, but still, I think that's a nice little indicator in the, in the ayah too. So because he was one of our purified slaves, mukhlasin, right? So it's, it's yeah. a mafrul, yeah. So yeah, we've got two readings here, mukhlasin and mukhlasin. Mm. And they are close in meaning, but slightly different. Yeah. So akhlasa is to purify something. Mm-hmm. You can get from that to select you can get a sense of, uh, you know, mukhlasin, that he's chosen. You can actually translate it in that way. Yeah. Because in a way, he's he's the, the purest out of all people is is selected. Um, so that's one way. Our own purified slaves, 
that his soul is purified, etc., as a possibility. And mukhlisin means one who makes himself solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, makes his intentions pure. Uh, that's the meaning of khlas. niyatahu, etc. Yeah, akhlasa yeah. deenahu lillah and, 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 right. and beyond that. Yeah. A purifying slave. But that would be harder to cap- capture with one word. Because right. it requires a maf- would be requires an, uh, an object. Let's read ayah number twenty-five. They raced for the door. Yep. They raced for the door, and she tore his shirt from behind, and they ran into her husband at the door. I'm just trying to see if you got a. Yeah, dollar sign. Sorry about the dollar sign. These are some footnotes <laughs> that I was using different signs. Her husband, it's not a, yeah, at the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will, we will remove the dollar sign. He was a baller. Uh, husband is not ATM, no. and they uh, ran into her husband. Well, at okay. the door. She cried out, What payback should there be? I uh, see, cried out, call it. Mm. Not she said, context based. What payback should there be? other than jail or excruciating torture, for someone who wanted to do something vile and shameful to your family? So this, uh, I, I recall we had, you know, a bit of struggle with how to deal with a long sentence and what order to put things in yeah. to retain clarity as much as we can. Um, because you go illa. So the illa is much more natural in Arabic to be thrown at the end. Um, but it's much tougher to do that in English and get um, a logically flowing sentence. So, for example, if we had said, she cried out, what payback should there be for someone who wants to do something vile and shameful to your family ex- other than jail or excruciating torture, it takes actually away from the the choice that she's offering at the end. But mm-hmm. the, the there's an emphasis in illa and yusjana or adabun alim at the end in Arabic that if you throw this at the end in English, this doesn't happen. Mm. But uh, when we translated, what payback should there be other than jail or excruciating torture for someone who wanted to do something vile and shameful to your family? That's, it's, it's now bringing that stress that's natural at the end in Arabic to the middle because it's more natural to do that in English uh, in the middle. Mm. So anything else that stands out here? They raced for the door. What's the bab? She tore her shirt from behind and they okay. ran. So we've used and and um yeah. which which works fine. Mm-hmm. And they ran into her husband at the door. Sayyidaha, did, yeah. Yeah, we did make an observation in the footnote about you know the significance of the word Sayyid and possibly that Sayyidaha implies that, you know head of household, really, in this case. Yeah, really? and that and that she perhaps did not have uh, have a sense of authority higher than than him because she did not she was not conscious of God. Yeah. So there was some sense of that, maybe in the footnote. Uh, but ultimately, it just has to come down to the word husband, because we we have several different words in the Quran referring to husbands. Yeah. Ma jazaa'uman arada bi ahlika su'an. What should be? What do we say? Um, she cried out, what payback should there be? What payback should there be? Four? You say four? Mm-hmm. For someone who wanted to do something. Mm. So we're using four assume. here, even though this is an idlafa, because that's, you have to do that sometimes. Not what should be the payback of someone, but payback for someone is better English. Mm. Except that... What did we say the two options are? Jail. Other than jail, hmm. So maybe we should consider an yusjana, the, the verbal and the it's not illa an yusjana or you you know, and it's not illa sijin or adab. There is a verb to noun uh, switch. We probably wrestled with this and 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 and. and... Chose brevity. Could it make it sound nice? Um, be, well, not nice, but I mean, make it sound nice and coherent in English. Yeah, because if you say, okay, so let's try this. Other than being jailed or excruciating torture. That doesn't make sense because then it would be other than being, being jailed, jailed or, or being, being excruciating. And then, then you're doing an, you'adhab, bi'adhab in alim. 
Yeah. So you're 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 making that verbalized. So you. I think we tried a few possibilities and we didn't find something that quite succeeded. Yeah. So we admitted defeat, perhaps. Um, mm. But you know, it can we can revisit. We can hear suggestions. It's but, also interesting that there's an escalation here. Mm. Prison is bad, but being tortured painfully is much worse. Mm. Um, so it's as if, except he should be jailed. Or even better, he should be given some really painful torture. Mm. You know, so like there's an escalation in her suggestions. Instead of saying, oh, jailed or at least fined. <laughs> it's actually, no, 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 I got a better idea. Adabun Alim. Mm. Right. So she's upping the drama a few notches. Wish we wish there was a way to I mean, it's easy to capture that as I'm talking, right? But putting that in a sentence in English, ooh, so that's tough. That's really tough. So it's one of those footnote things that I think is worthy of, mm. of notice. Mm -hmm. And Arada bi ahli So it's not so unusual the way we've translated it, but su'an, um, usually people are translating as evil. So intended evil against your wife or against your family, mm. um, evil with. So e su is open-ended. Uh, so it's not just mm. evil. It's many forms of evil. And something vile is something evil. So in this context, something vile is the right word for evil. Uh, somebody actually said incarcerated. So yeah, so if you use any of these verbs that are passive, to be incarcerated, to be jailed, to be imprisoned, um, being given imprisonment or a painful torture. In all of them, what you're doing is you're going from a verb to a noun. Impris being imprisoned or given imprisonment or painful torture. So are you saying given painful torture? Because that's not what the ayah is saying. So that's, that's the challenge, that if you use the verbal form in one, you kind of have to use the verbal form in the other for it to be natural. If you use the nominal form, jail or torture, then you have to use the noun on both sides. Now, the reason we inclined, I think, grammatically, the reason I probably became more convinced that even though we're compromising here, the compromise of jail and torture works better, is that an and a mudare does stand in the place of a masdar. So it, it's the, it's cl it, even though it's a verb, it can represent a noun. Mm -hmm. But adabun alim, the noun, cannot represent a verb. So the fact that we went with both nouns is still somewhat grammatically justified mm -hmm. than going with the verbal form on both. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. We can move to the Ayah 26, I think. 26. Bismillah. 26. قال هي راودتني عن نفسي وشهد شاهد من أهلها قال he said no she tried to have me give myself to her we stuck to the original phrasing that we discovered وشهد شاهد and a witness from her family so spoke we said, up we said then a witness yeah yeah then a witness from her family spoke up this is similar to قال قائل منهم mm -hmm. so then we're using a similar formula here to شهد شاهد yeah, yeah. So a witness from her family spoke up. In kana qamisuhu qudda. If his shirt happens to be, the happens to be is coming from the kana. In kana, yeah. yeah. So if the shirt happens to be torn from the front, then she's telling the truth. Uh, so we didn't really communicate. Wahua I mean, more literally, it's like it happens to have been torn, but it, that becomes unnecessarily right. wordy. I think. Right. Have, no, no, that's kana not the problem. Qudda. But he is a liar, mm -hmm. while literally he is of the liars. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. Which is old old English, but that's really what the Arabic says. But there's but we, we have maintained the distinction between the the verb usage and the noun usage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then she's telling the truth and he is a liar. But if it turns out that his shirt is torn from the back. So we've got a different uh, way of doing the in kana. If his shirt happens to be torn, but if it turns out that his shirt is torn from the back, mm. then she lied. فَكَذَبَتْ وَهُوَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ And he's an honest man. 
So here we're, we're, we're trying to find ways to get in decent natural English the distinction here between the fair usage and the ism usage. What do we do with the men's? Do we do, do a footnote thing here? Because... Min al kadibin. Okay, so yeah. min al sadiqin, min al kadibin. Um, you know, th this usage in general, um, which is used in many places in the Quran, even fakana min al kafirin. Yeah, Iblis is told in the min al sadiqin. It doesn't mean that there were kafirin necessarily before him. It doesn't mean he became among them. He became one of them. It literally means that. But then the way this expression works, as the Mufassirin explained, is that it means it became an entrenched sifa of that person. So he's he's one of them, like he's defined as one. Mm -hmm. So that we, we've conveyed that and he is a liar. That We don't get from that that he lied once. Usually you're right. a liar. It would be you're a person who tells lies. Right. And he's an honest man. You don't get from that that he's You're telling the truth this once. Yeah. yeah. So we did carry over what we got from the explanation of these expressions. Yeah. So what do we do? So when he saw his shirt torn from the back. Yeah, so when. You want to update the banners? Oh, yeah. But if it turns out that his shirt is torn from the back, then she lied and he's an honest man. Hmm. Uh, 28. There we go. So when he saw his shirt torn from the back, he said, bear in mind here, there's a discussion and disagreement as to who the he is. Yeah. For us in the translation, we weren't forced to choose at this point. Yeah. Is it the Shahid? Is it the Aziz? I think those are the two possibilities only. Yeah. So when he saw his shirt torn from the back, he said, uh, well, in fact, to be honest, it becomes, I think it becomes uh, clear that it's the clear Aziz. That it's the Aziz yeah. yeah, but it doesn't have to be spelled out. Yeah, so there's no, no need to say when the Aziz saw his shirt, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, most of the time in this whole surah, it's just qala, qalat. There's, there's very little of like qala Yaqub, anything of this nature. Right. Qala Yusuf. Yeah. Because, you, you know, you're supposed to depend upon your attention to the story. Yeah. And occasionally, there is an ambiguity, and uh, that ambiguity turns out to be quite meaningful in exploring the different possibilities of who said the specific words. Yeah. Anyway, but here, he said, this is yet another example of the scheming of you women. Your scheming is truly incredible. So this is Nahu Min Kaidikunna. Yet this is another example of the scheming of Yuman. Yeah, Min Kaidikunna. Yeah. So here, of course, the the pronoun Kaidikunna. Yeah. Is referring to at least a group of women, a plurality of women. Mm -hmm. Does he mean you women of the city? Or you womankind? Women in general, womankind. And of course, this is the statement of somebody. This is a person's reaction. To the situation for the for the detailed discussion of that go to the lectures inshallah um so, so, so somebody suggested the the hua can be yusuf salam. no it cannot be yusuf salam. yusuf is going to get check to see which the which part of the shirt is torn he's going to see which part of his shirt is, his own shirt is torn bro bro like he knows what happened he doesn't have to keep, go check and see also in the next, in the next oh wait it is torn from the back i am an honest man Okay, okay. Pay attention. You're supposed to be the nice one. Pay attention. So, uh, in the next ayah, he says, Yusuf a'arid an hadha. So, someone is speaking to Yusuf. Yep. And it's very clearly a continuation. That's of, 29, of, yes? Of a person speaking. Yeah. So, no, but I'm, I'm not saying jump ahead. I'm just saying uh, part of the reason why it can't be Yusuf oh. saying this is because then the person says, Yusuf a'arid an hadha. Or is he saying it to himself? himself? Yeah. Okay, so when he saw his shirt torn from the back, he said, this is yet another example. Min kaidikunna, it's an know, example from of this min, yeah. this is yet another so, example. So the literal would have been, this is, this is certainly, it is from your, the scheming of you women. But the from here is actually a kind of, this is just yet another case of. Hmm. So that's why we said, 
this is yet another example yeah. of you could go in different ways with this min you could see it as this is due to it, it stems from mm. your scheming nature or something like that but you know this is how we felt it we, we saw this as in nahu kaidun min kaidikun yeah how we saw it. yeah another yeah. example of the scheming of you women yeah so somehow you've got to get across the fact that he very deliberately is speaking with some uh, plural for for women yeah so you know you might want to say that you women's scheming or i just don't think it would work yeah so the scheming of you women your scheming that he's still saying to you women is truly incredible so uh, but we must have thought about Azim uh, at some length. But here it's about a man who has got this perspective on how women's minds work and how their uh, actions play out. I don't know. I'm just, I'm thinking about your scheming. Mm -hmm. I know it's on the one hand obvious that your refers to you women. But it could be the way we've written it might seem like he's talking to specifically his wife. Yeah, no, I think that there's there, there needs to be more. There's an itnab here. There's a there's a reference to the pronoun multiple times. And it could have been, you know, inna hu alim. Mm -hmm. But inna kaida kunna alim. This is actually. Or in, uh, inna hu min kaidi kunna al alim. Right, something like right. that. Inna kaida kunna alim. The kaida is repeated. Kunna is repeated, and it's un unnaturally repeated. Actually, so he's going out of his way to kind of deflect responsibility from an individual and make this a, uh, oh mm -hmm. yeah, you all you crazy women. So you people, it's kind of like a you people, the scheming you people do, is incredible. It's something along those lines. I don't know if we can use you people because he is being condescending here. That's for sure. You know. And I think some of that has to come across. That's not coming across in your scheming. Maybe, how about you women's scheming? I was thinking about that, but that sounds like Jackson Heights in New York, where they have a lot of Punjabi restaurants. That's why I didn't, you women's scheming. So these are the kind of references I won't get. Yeah, this, okay, um, South Hall. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, we, that's our south hall okay that's so, our south hall. so we, we may we may need to uh improve on it but truly incredible i think also we've chosen over some other possibilities let me have a look what some people have said your conspiracy is vile indeed tremendously what did they say well well alvim normally is uh great yeah cunning is great mighty a lot of greats and mighties formidable uh awesome <laughs> your scheming is awesome <laughs> i mean this is, this is muhammad asad who's is a you know one of the well, awesome change you know strategy. awesome in his time behold this is an instance of your guile oh womankind verily awesome is your guile so awesome of course it's has like they're in a street fighting tournament had, had, and they pay guile awesome. as their character and they win oh, the yeah. tournament. awesome also has you know a, a, a proper meaning and then it has the colloquial meaning so we would struggle to use awesome now because it's yeah. become so colloquial. That was so awesome. awesome. Dude, your scheming is like awesome. It's like, so good. Uh, your is, is normal. Like, I'm impressed. Your tricks <laughs> Isn't are that great. Kind of good, like, a theme. Like, Verily, your tricks are great. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> this only is great? A lot of people have great, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the common great. That's great. I mean, uh, it, maybe it's like, that's Azim, just great. You know what? Alim to so great, great is a very, you know, direct, you know, very often. In Azim. context. In context. That's why language is not the same as the dictionary. Um, you can use the same word in different places and it not be the same thing. Wiles, your wiles are serious. Your wiles? Wiles. Mm. That's your, that's your South Pole coming out of you. Wiles. What? Well, how do you spell that? Rufa? How do you spell it? W I L E S. I didn't know that was a word. What's that word? Yeah, it's like cunning. You've ever, you, you, I mean, I, okay. I haven't seen you in a while because you're wild. No, that's a while. That's yeah, different. I know, but I'm just saying. Uh, the plot of human is a very serious one. Awesome. Oh, Abdul Salahi, also awesome. What did Abdul Halim do? 
Sayyidi Al Ustad and Dr. Abdul Halim has got your treachery is truly great. So great, of course, like I say, it can work, but it just you get the sense that it's not uh, gonna come through. Correctly. Yeah. So we said incredible because it's he's doing ta'ajjub. Yes. Ooh, it's unbelievable. And even, you know what, uh, uh, there, there could be, uh, even though we're making fun in a, in a way. It could be the same impressed. criticism of incredible. He might actually be impressed. Like, wow, what you guys, what you gals get up to. Amazing. Incredible. Incredible in a good way, incredible in a bad Hard way. Up. Anyway, I think. <laughs> and remember, this is a quotation from the Aziz, the politician who is trying to make his point and trying to deflect from the situation yeah. of the specifically what's going on in his home to make this a problem of women in general and, uh, you know, rather than the specifics. Yeah. Uh, because, and I, and I say that because, you know, there's this uh, thing that goes around and you sometimes find in the tafsir that they say, oh, in another ayah it says, inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. Oh my God. And here it says, inna kayda kuna alim. So put two and two together and get 60, 64, right? You are going to say, well... The shaitan's scheme is weak, Allah says, and women's scheming is great. Allah, is Allah doesn't Azim say it. That was the minister who's a politician mm -hmm. who's trying to get out of a scandal that his wife's involved in. So he's kind of deflect the responsibility off of his family is saying this, and you're quoting it like Allah is validating his nonsense. And um, of course, sometimes people will say that in response to that, but there's no rad. You know, Allah did not retort Against him. Allah have to retort? Did Allah retort to like the woman saying hey talaq and she shouldn't have said it? Hmm. Like, it's a story. Iblis talks. Allah doesn't say, and that was a really messed up thing he said. Yeah. So some, yeah, you got to look in the context. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and here it's not about whether what he said is absolutely true or absolutely false. The point is there are words. He absolutely come, said it. And he which, said it in a context. And he meant something by it. And there's a, there's a reason Allah is mentioning it. Not because we take guidance from the scheming of women is truly great. But because when politicians get caught up, they try to uh, phrase things in a way that deflects blame from the individual that can cost them their political career. So he's just kind of softening the blow by saying, ah, oh, you women are all the same. Yeah. Ah, so crazy, these women. Right? Right, Yusuf? Yeah. But you know that again. That's that's kind of the way that the perspective that we have taken. We're not also saying that that is the absolute, or the only way, the only thing that you can get from this. No, there's more. To what get. we're saying yeah. is you have to reflect on it while bearing in mind the fact that it's a quotation. Yeah. After that, if you still feel that okay, but there's truth in what he said, you know, but not because he said it and he's a prophet, or because Allah said it and it's in his Quran. Those are not the reasons why it would be true. Can't use those. Yeah. It would have to be supported by something external to that. Yeah. Because within itself, it's not a proof of that. Yeah. This ayah is not a proof that the kind of women is alim. That's all. That's what we're saying. Yeah. So, Joseph, uh, this, but the many, you know, uh, studies of this. I know someone who's done uh, maybe a whole masters on uh, on the kaid in the Quran and uh, specific to this. So, inshallah, we'll we'll study it when we get the chance. Okay. Joseph, put all this behind you. Oh, I like that. Did we write that? Yeah. So, you know, normally you say, you know, turn away from this. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, turn away but from But literally this. put something behind your back. It kind of amounts to the same thing. Yeah. And this is more. It's closer to the English idiom. Yeah. Yeah, what we say in English, put it yeah. behind you. And you, woman, must apologize for your shameful deed because you have truly been at fault. Now here, of course, again, this women thing is, is partly because we lose in English. You know, ironically, so many people talk about pronouns, but nobody's dealing with the second person pronouns. Yeah. Uh, so, wastelfiri, wastelfiri, lidambiki. So it's there's there's a um, there's a lot of use here. And in Arabic, that is clearly not directed to Yusuf. In some of the translations, no. It makes it sound like it's directed to the use. No. Yeah, including one of the, in fact, the most recent translations that's out there. Wait, what? Um, no. Yeah. I mean, it's just if you don't put something about, you know. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. 
Um, I mean, it might not be on this digital thing that I'm looking at. People have tended to write in brackets, oh, my wife, oh, wife. Well, okay, look at this, uh, the study Quran. Joseph, turn away from this, and you seek forgiveness for your sin. Truly, you were among those at fault. I would strongly disagree, yeah. However, just bear in mind, they have extensive uh, notes underneath the translation, so they may fix it by saying, yeah, oh, that's how it's understood. Uh, some people have put wife or women in brackets along the lines. I think when we said woman, we're kind of getting, he's, he's, he's talking like this at the moment. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he, this is the vibe that he's giving out. So yeah, it to for that. sure. Uh, yes. Must apologize. Is that what we said? Yeah. I'm not so settled on that now all of a sudden. I think that, well, yeah, it, it does feel a bit weak, but I think the issue that we addressed here was, is it is this a religious exhortation? Sounds like it. Are they religious people? They're using it in the, in the sense of repent. Are right. they though? Who is he asking her to... Was I think that was the question that we probably. Yeah. I don't have the full notes of these sessions. <laughs> I've got the recordings we can go back to. But um, I think the reason why we've ended up with this is because she's is because not a religious it's a, it, woman or they're not a religious people. We, we're not seeing God in their equation at this point in time, certainly. Um, so it might be out of place. To, to understand him. But how would we distinguish istighfar outside of the religious context from i'tidar? Um, I don't understand your question, sorry. So like apologizing is, doesn't really sound like a direct translation of istighfar. No, it doesn't. So we're, we're implying it from it, but... But I mean, but what, what is apologizing? What does it mean to apologize? Yeah, so you're so it's in, by implication. You ask someone's forgiveness. Yeah. Um, anyway, we, we could we could change this, but I think so. Some of the translations say things like you know, beg forgiveness for your shameful deed. So that can be broad enough to mean you know forgiveness from God or well, otherwise. Yeah, beg forgiveness. I don't, I can't think of an English context, even outside of the Islamic context, where beg forgiveness would mean anything but beg forgiveness of God. I don't think people say to each other, beg forgiveness or ask forgiveness or repent, mm -hmm. except in a spiritual context. Repent, so, certainly. It's yeah. very specifically very, religious. Yeah. Beg forgiveness probably could tread a line between the two. Mm. Apologize, we don't say apologize to God. Right. So it feels like we went very much on one side and maybe we're hesitating now because we... We're looking at this now. So the conflict is the, the context makes it apologize no problem. The language is not actually. Wasn't there a paper that we heard about at was it the Oxford thing that we went to, where the person was saying that the or was uh, I think it was Saqib who was saying that there's language in this surah that's it used is, outside of the Quran. It's used in religiously and, and it's used here in the worldly sense. Like it's yeah. one of the features of the surah. Mm -hmm. It's one of its signatures. So Rabb is an example of that, mm -hmm. right? Um, Maybe the, under the influence of that theory, we felt that this is an example of it. Yeah. Like from our own... Okay, I'm less uncomfortable mission. now. Okay. Um, it definitely requires a, 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 a footnote thought. or at least a footnote underneath this because it is such a strong word in the Quran. And if we're going to depart from its conventional translation, we have to provide justification. Yeah. Yeah. So generally, as forgiveness, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So people are saying repent or seek forgiveness should be used, but what they're not understanding is seek forgiveness is not used um, for human beings go, in that way. Go to a. He's not telling her go to a convent and become a religious woman. Yeah, or go to the temple and ask. Ra I mean, or but this comes down to okay, we're used to reading this surah in a certain way. We're used to just seeing the words and their commonplace meanings. Right. We're not used to thinking about the world of the Quran, the world that the mission of the Quran is describing, and thinking about who is the Aziz and what is it likely that he's actually saying here. Right, right. We have to go to ancient Egypt. 
I have to put, take our mind to ancient Egypt, to these godless politicians and their, you know, their wives and their families and their lifestyle, and then understand how are they talking to each other. So they're, they're not using spiritual language. We are. So uh, th this is... This is you you know in in other places even in the in the surah when they come uh to their father and apologize to him and they ask him to you know ask Allah's forgiveness for us right you know we were it's truly that, yeah. you know we were truly uh, wrongdoers so it's I, I I think that we we may be comparing it to that and seeing that one of them is um you know, in a in, in, in Islamic with, with a purely religiously imbued worldview, and the other is not. Yeah. So we use the profane translation here rather than the same translation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think we could do one more uh, ayah before we pause for salah. Okay, let's do that. Ayah thirty. Uh, ayah thirty. And a group of women in the city. And a group of women in the city started saying. The high minister's wife is trying to have her servant boy give himself to her. Love for him has really taken over her heart. As far as we're concerned, she's clearly lost. Hmm. Notes? Yeah, you, you have? No? <laughs> Do you? Should I make notes? Uh... Uh, and a group of women in the city started That works saying, for me. Niswatun, you know, is just how we understood the use yeah. of the word niswa. And, and, and started saying works for Qala here. That's fine. Yeah, with, with, the, with the sort of sense. So, wa qala, you know, at length, you know, this started happening. Fataha an nafsihi. Al-Aziz, Imra'atul Aziz, this is the first place she's called that and it's on their tongue. Yeah. So it's, they're specifically making a point. Oh, of all people, the high minister's wife. The high minister's wife. Mm -hmm. The Lord high minister's wife. It's, we're going to put voice notes inside ours. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be an audio like those kids' audiobooks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The high minister's wife. The high minister's you... high wife is trying to have her servant boy give himself to her. So we've kind of we put a question mark here because they're like amazed at that, you know, the so yeah. In Arabic, something can be a question just very easily. Just there's no question marks in the Quran, so you have to decide if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh love for him has really taken over her heart. This is a very intricate expression. <laughs> but this is how we have one for love for him has really taken over her heart. That has a lot to do with the etymology of shagaf. Yeah, to, yeah. Get, to, to it can cover it can to cover the cover. heart. Shagaf al qalb can be the what do they call it? Epicardium. Epicardium. Watch your mouth. Pericardium. That's what I said. Pericardium. I think. Uh, which is the which is the membrane over the, the outside of the heart? I'm gonna ask my sister. So She's a, a doctor. Yeah, you check. Okay. This doctor's watching right now. I know. They're telling you. Perry, 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 chicken. The pericardium. Okay. Uh, as far as we're concerned, so it's inna la naraha. Inna la naraha fi dalalim mubin. Again, dalalim mubin. We could go into or religious misguidance or. So clearly lost. They're not making a religious judgment of her. They don't sound very pious. I don't think they're very pious. They don't really come across as very pious mm -hmm. in the next eye in reality. So open misguidance would not be. Yeah. Good as far as we're concerned, she's clearly lost. Mm. So there's a certain you know attempt to get some I, I aspect of the tone in English. It's difficult. I, it's trying it's to get more. I, I'm even thinking about getting more I'm wordy walking. here, but because fee what are they but I, it, it can't because the clearly is already there. Mm. She's utterly clearly lost. Yeah. Okay. So the next ayah has got my important gymnastics. Inshallah. So okay. we'll come back to that. We'll after come back to that. We have Inshallah. played. So we've only worked up to thirty-one and thirty-two. Yeah. We only yeah. Got, we only got up to thirty-two. So our real work begins after. After Salah. We're gonna take a break. Zakmalaw Khairim, Salam Alaikum Warahmatullah, see you in a few minutes. And I shall.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم everyone we are back and um, we're going to pick up from ayah number 31 that's where we left off so فلما سمعت بمكرينا let me see if I can pull up in the mushaf I lost my place in the mushaf top of the page yeah no oh okay sorry فلما سم... that's what the top of the page means thank you for the yeah pointer أول الصفحة فلما سمعت بمكرهن أرسلت إليهن. Let's start there. Uh, when she got word of their muck raking. All right. I am مكر. unreasonably مكر. proud of this word. And I know that many people مكرهن. will. مكرهن. Yeah. Some people will object and etc. etc. But here's the thing. Makr tends to mean something like a plot, a plan, a scheme. Right? Yeah. And here the Mufassirin... Understood, of course, that these are some women gossiping. What's that got to do with a plot? And so they said, well, okay, maybe talking in secret has some resemblance with a plot. So the word makr can be applied to it, even if it's just gossip. Mm -hmm. And our reading of the story, we tended to think, well, there's probably a bit more going on here. There's some rivalry. Um, They're trying to take her down. Her husband her is in, in that up. position where their husbands, you know, should be the ones who are in that Aziz position. Right. Um, so there's a bit more to it. And the word uh, plot and scheme might be too direct. Right. Because when she heard of their plot, it's difficult to understand. And that's exactly why the Mufassirin had this discussion of, well, in what sense is it a plot? So we thought of the word muckraking, which exists in English. It is a sort of gossip. Did muckraking have a history in English with whistleblowing? Am I, am I wrong so. about that? I think so. No, I mean, I think that you're wrong. Uh, the action of searching out and publicizing scandal about famous people, that's what muckraking is. Ah, okay. Well, that sounds perfect. Like literally raking through the muck. Yeah. You know, like bin raiding yeah. outside a celebrity's house or oh, something see, like that. Muckraking. So look, not by accident, it sounds like makr and it makes me happy. It, it sparks joy in me and <laughs> that is enough reason to do it. Yeah, so like, come at me, when bro. They, <laughs> give me your makr yeah. and you'll be aching. Anyway, when she got word of their muckraking, she sent for them. That's older English, she sent for them. We don't really use that anymore, but I think it can work. Mm. People have seen enough old school type stories. And even got word of, I think, was a nice turn of phrase. Got, got uh, word of their muckraking. Some had to be, yeah. Yeah. Heard about. She sent for them. Um, yeah, she sent for them works. That's fine. And arranged a relaxing setting for them. Uh, وَأَعْتَدَتْ لَهُنَّ مُتَّكَأَ مُتَّكَأَ Something to recline on. So that's, in a sense, it's not just saying that she prepared cushioned seats. It's actually describing an entire environment. Uh, and this is just part of the brevity of the Arabic language. You can do that. So I think going for the overall sense, arranged a relaxed setting for them, is a good uh, approach here. وَآتَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِنْهُنَّ سِكِّينَ And handed each one of them a knife. Um, each one of them, كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِنْهُنَّ That's good, a knife. Uh, and وَقَالَتْ And called. أُخْرُجْ uh, عَلَيْهِنَّ Come out to them. Come on out to them. That makes good sense. فَلَمَّا رَأِنَهُ So when they laid eyes on him. I like that. Hmm. Yeah. It's just uh, idiomatic. Idiomatic. Uh, yeah. Nothing specific about the way it's worded in the Arabic. But yeah. Just it's contextually relevant. Mm. Um, akbarnahu. They were awestruck by him. Yeah. Quite literally, they aggrandized him. They thought he was great, um, uh, and all of that can be captured. And they were awestruck by him. It's good. Waqatta'na uh, aydiyahuna and sliced into their hands. Uh, there's quite a bit of commentary on qatta'na aydiyahuna, isn't there? And sure. there's some crazy theories too. Yeah, so obviously that's discussed at length in the lectures, yeah. um, different points of view about it. And we also even corresponded with some different scholars and got some points of view. Yeah, But in the translation, not too much needs to be done to 
to get the point across unless you really feel that this is not literal at all and it refers to something else. But we understand it literally except, you know, how to understand it specifically is a different question. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you want to listen to the lectures on this on YouTube that I've done, I've kind of delved into how we see this playing out, especially because of the the taf'il form of qatana and yeah. it, it not necessarily meaning they chop their hands off and no or they you know deliberately cut their hands but they, but there can be so when something is made qatana as as opposed to qatana yeah uh, it can mean that there's a lot of hands involved right right it doesn't mean a lot of cutting or like deep cuts for example right but i think we took that takthir into the word sliced sliced yeah yeah sliced into and yeah. sliced also has the room for um it not being deliberate mm. like the idea of them maybe paying attention to yusuf and Oh, yeah, you know, like which which no, is Miss the Orange, probably the most obvious interpretation of it. Although we did consider some other ways uh, yeah. that they may have done so for, in order to stir up the situation more and, and and compete for his attention or different points of view. Yeah, and called out, "Good God, hmm. Good God!" What what are what are what have some others done with that? Why is Christopher Walken uh, coming to the room? Good God. Uh, other ways of, of uh, translating this? Oh, lonely. Uh, well, some of the... Oh, my Allah, word. Uh, God forbid. God, God forbid. Yeah, that's literal, isn't it? God forbid. Yeah, in other circumstances, this would definitely be translated that way. Um, Allah blameless. Apparently, that's Pickthol, although he might not... It might be adapted. Sometimes, when you look online at some translations, someone has tinkered with it and they changed God to Allah or they changed the endow to you etc um, so that can be a difficulty when we're trying to see what did that person really write uh, how perfect is God that God, doesn't come across with Hashad anyway well it can and uh, it's because it's it can be like subhanallah in a certain way hmm. um, God save us God preserve us Lord have mercy so it it is a little bit challenging to see how hashalillah fits in this circumstance and especially again what could be a very religious statement and utterance in a context which does not come across as you know pious at all so what what is hashalillah doing so I, I think that's why we kind of took it as it's more like the kind of thing a person says even if they don't even believe in god i'm just reminded of fahim when I hear this, Why? you know, when whenever you say something, he goes, Allah, <laughs> <laughs> Allah, 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 yeah. So, you know, good. God. Actually, so good God. O OMG. We do have uh, like that kind of thing. A few translators said good God, actually, as I see now. Sweet. So that's that's a way of, of, of taking it. We're going to come to the expression that we most struggled with and um, maybe didn't feel that we've done right. Let's see. Let's see. No way is this a human. This can only be... Ma basharan. No way is this a human. That's great, actually, I think. In terms of the ma... Yeah. The, the, you know, the, this type of negation and what yeah. it might indicate. Yeah. This can only be a something angel. This can only be an immaculate angel. This is what we ended on. Mm -hmm. Although we went through a lot of possibilities. So Karim... Of course, has so many generosity, uh, nobility, decency, uh, goodness, uh, piety, even. And there's lots of associations with, with so, Karam. It, again, also the overall tone, what's happening here. I think that our leaning was towards them, sort of having realized that he is not just. This is not just an utterance upon just observing his beauty, but also the way he carried himself, the way he did not pay them attention. Mm -hmm. And maybe even within the ayah, there's some parts which is not spelled out, which is that they may have been trying to get his attention at that point and, yeah. and failing. And then having observed that, they are just saying like, wow. good God. And even maybe in a way that is telling him off for this, you know, how, yeah. how, how dare he look. You know, when they've come for this oh, you're, you're such an angel, huh? Yeah. Hmm. yeah well, he must even... be. Yeah, he must be if he's not interested in us. Yeah. So th this is what I, these people, I call them. Remember what I call them? The real housewives of Heliopolis. 
So this this whole scenario where they are, you know, obviously they've come for this soiree with uh, Mrs. Aziz, and she has, you know, prepared everything for them. They've come in their finery and their in, in their, because that's what they would do. Mm-hmm. They're not going to go around in their slippers and, and pajamas. So even though they didn't set out necessarily, oh, they, they knew about this uh, fata, mm. who the Mrs. Aziz is over uh, overwhelmed by. So. You know, it's some people understood the makr in that sense as well, and they said, "Well, maybe they were actually, you know, spreading these rumors so that the uh, the wife of the Aziz would call them, and so that they'd get a chance to see Yusuf." So hmm. all these possibilities are discussed. But what does that lead us to in the translation? That maybe they're saying, "Well, if he's not interested in us, he must be a holy angel," and they can be saying it in a sort of mocking way, right? Uh, of course, other people might just read it as he's extremely beautiful. This is not a, this is not human beauty. This is angelic angelic beauty. beauty yeah, okay. that's also fine. I mean, that's fine. But what, what that's does actually it, what's more conventionally said in our circles, anyway, at least. So the question is, what does what does Karim indicate then here? That's, right. that's the difficult part. Um, the nobility, the grace. The, I'm sure people have used graceful angel, have they? Uh, let's see. We've got precious angel. I just noticed. Yeah. Gracious angel is Pickthol, Yeah. I would imagine. And, uh, and Nassim Dawood. We've got goodness gracious. For Hashem in the... I could take that. Good God, goodness gracious. Mm. So, gracious angel. I kind of like it. Immaculate, we... we I like gracious with, angel too, but... The, the, the sense that we ended up with uh, immaculate was... It's pristine, pure... Right, yeah, and that you know, Maryam, salam alayha, when she has you know become pregnant with Jesus, this is called in Christian tradition the immaculate conception, right, right, without being touched. So that resonance was there, but we also felt like okay, the main problem with this is it's such a fancy word, and people will complain and say right. I don't know what this means, and mm-hmm. I had to use a dictionary, and how dare you, so. Maybe we, you know, maybe we change it to gracious. Yeah, maybe gracious. It's just, it's still Someone not something. very much like the word Kareem. This is my my feeling. But I, I, I'm okay with a noble angel too. Noble angel. Very conventional. You know, like in, in the Kant, Al-Aziz al Kareem. Hmm. And it is kind of highlighting his nobility. Angel yeah. can highlight his beauty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to change it to noble. And, you know, if people have got thoughts, thoughtful thoughts. Are there any thoughtful thoughts, Yasin? Well, people are suggesting noble. Oh, sure, okay. but you heard noble before. So what is it that about noble that really stands out for you or makes it right? Other than, I heard it all my life. Wallahi, I heard it too. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So we want reasons. But I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking noble because of this uh, this duality of context, hmm. physical beauty and character, right? And physical beauty part of it can possibly get communicated through the word angel, and character can get communicated through noble. Um, also, the mockery of a slave being called a noble, mm-hmm. right? So that that would also kind of work here. And and you know, there in the tradition, he is called. Al Karim ibn Al Karim ibn Al Karim ibn Al Karim. So right. That is to do with the nobility of his lineage. Right. Right. So okay. Noble it is until further notice. Khalas. Thirty two. So our draft of this, I don't think you've got probably a banner for that. Yeah. No. So I'm gonna put eye. your screen when we're ready. Yeah, okay. I'm ready. Should I? Yeah. Okay. And we did um we did actually start this and then we just sort of like... Why don't you in- increase the font size on 32? I'll just increase the font size generally. Yeah, uh-huh. So people can see. I feel like Norman Ali Khan now. Um, Screen sharing. Is this now big enough or... Mm, yeah. uh, not by my standards. I like to make it so that, you know, one one letter per screen. Let's let's bump it up some more. So this is this then uh, I think that you got tired or you had to do a game of pool or something and 
we stopped here. It wasn't because it was too impossible to finish, but we don't know. It was Street Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She said, So there you go. The one you were criticizing me about. And yes, I did try to have him give himself to me, but he held his ground. No, if he First doesn't do whatever somebody, I he say. Held his ground. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. If he doesn't do whatever I say, I swear he will be imprisoned. Whatever I say. I, I, can, I, can, we, can I suggest whatever I say be changed to whatever I tell him to? Yeah. Doesn't do whatever I tell him to. It's kind of like a, maybe a significant... Ma amur would have been worked too. But. Yeah, so there's yeah, there's two ways of reading the grammar of ma amuruhu, but that's you know that's good as well. Yeah. So, so let's go back a little bit. So there you go. Dalikunna. Okay. You were the one, the, the one you were criticizing me about, and yes, I did try to have him give himself to me. Walaqad rawatuhu an nafsi. Wastaasama he held his ground. Wa illa miyafal ma amuruhu. And if he now, if he doesn't do whatever I tell him, so, so bear in mind that so where's the now coming from? Uh, context, tra- yeah, context, yeah, transition here, isn't it? La yus janna. I swear he will be imprisoned. Wala yakunam min al saqirin, And he will absolutely be humiliated. No, he he will absolutely be. No, I don't want to translate this as um, passive. How do I translate this not as passive? He will be something for sure. Mm-hmm. Saqir, humiliated, degraded, lowly, wretched, lowly. He will be I think humiliated is probably the only real contemporary word that hmm. captures Sahar. So like the the standard way of like dealing with this grammar, Minas Sagirin. So we've already departed from that in a number yeah. of places now. Minal Kadibin, Minas So I so, so we'll just start like this and then then work our way back. Okay. So, so we will be among the humiliated for sure. Mm. So here we've got the element of the, the tawqeed, which is there. Yeah. there la yakunam min as-sahirin. Wa yakunam min as-sahirin. No, la yakunam min as-sahirin. Yeah. yeah. So he will be among the humiliated for sure. So I think... Or could you expand this to he will join the the, the humiliated, meaning in prison? No, right? That's too much of a reading into the text. So the so one is you know attached to the other, and this could indicate that you know he'll be imprisoned and made among the saghirin and, and in the prison. Join the ranks of the humiliated, yeah. So that's not far fetched. Hmm. You're imprisoned. Well, who's this uh and join the ranks of the humiliated for sure? Is that too far-fetched? Minas Somebody else got in this document? Are you in this document? No. If somebody deletes everything, we'll... Okay, we'll cry. <laughs> but it's being recorded, so somebody yeah. will type it up. <laughs> somebody will type it up again, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Right. I swear he'll be imprisoned. Abased? No. Disgraced? Disgraced may be a good suggestion. So. Disgraced is more like khasi. Um, you know. Um, like dejected. Mm-hmm. So you'd say, like abased. Abased is the opposite of abased. Right? You're either abased or abased. And join the ranks of the. The A based. So uh, it doesn't even like the word A based. Join the ranks of the humiliated. Just never heard of it.
I still like humiliated better. I, I think that it just, it's, it's simple and it has resonance with most. Um, I, th I think it, to be honest, the word that speaks to me is wretched. Wretched for Sabir. Because humiliated, um, I don't know if this applies to both the word wretched and the word humiliated, but humiliated, uh, you know, means that you you were in a certain position and lost it and were humiliated. Whereas wretched is sort of more general as this unhappy or unfortunate state. So shouldn't humiliated be the right word because he is in a position of ability and he's being dropped from it? And I would reinforce that with the devil in oh, the Camino Salterin. You know, there's an expression, the basket of deplorables. The basket? Did you never hear about of the basket deplorable. of deplorables? Yeah. Um, people are going to hear it from me now. I'm going to use that when I'm playing basketball. Somebody makes a lucky shot. And I, think, the basket of I think it was, it was the women president that you didn't get. She referred to her opponents as a basket of deplorables. Ignomus. Ignomious. Ignomious. Ignominious. Ignomious. Belittled. Ignomious. Dishonored. Uh, deject, no, not dejected. Someone is going, Allah forbid. Allah forbid. You, which yeah, eye are you looking at? <laughs> I think some people are watching the live stream not so live. So don't comment here <laughs> on the wrong ayah. <laughs> or just Allah forbid that we use the word ignominious. Ignominious. Allah bachai. So the point is, like, okay. it's, it's got a new, um, it's not a word that is typically used, but it's become, it's come back into usage because of that, you know, but that's. Deserving strong condemnation, completely unacceptable. It's not quite the meaning. No, it's not quite the meaning. Let's look for synonyms of wretched. Miserable, unhappy, sad, broken hearted. No. I wasn't, wretched this, wasn't sitting right with me. But you, you got here, look, poor, pitiable, downtrodden, oppressed, powerless. Pitiful? Pitiful. Pathetic. Pathetic. Pathetic is kind of So how many how many uh do we have in the Quran? So we have got um well let's let's open up Halim's dictionary. Good so question. We, Let me search it too. To make it worth having these big books on my table. Let's just look at Sagar. Because you've got of course uh five. Mm -hmm. So this is وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَلْقِي عَصَاكَ فَإِذَا هِيَ تَلْقَفُ مَا يَأْفِكُونَ فَوَقَّعَ الْحَقُّ وَبَتَلَوَا مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ فَغُلِبُوا هُنَالِكَ وَانْقَلَبُوا صَاغِرِينَ Yeah, وَلَنُخْرِجَنَّهُمْ مِنْهَا أَذِلَّةً وَهُمْ صَاغِرُونَ فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ إبليس, right? فقاتل الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله ورسوله ولا يدينون دين الحق من الذين أوتوا الكتاب حتى يعطوا الجزية وهم صاغرون سورة التوبة so in, so in, وهم صاغرون probably uh, humiliated might be too strong disgraced might be too strong but they are somehow in a actually, low, lowly position. Actually, I would I would argue in that surah. I know it's controversial, yeah, yeah. but that it is in terms humiliated. of the overall context. Yeah, and who is Shafi? Irjir ilayhim falanati anhum bi junudin la qibla lahum biha wal nukhrijanhum minha adilla wa hum saghirun. This is Sulaiman. Hmm. It's also humiliated. But they're brought low. They're made subservient. That's yeah. the sense from it. I quite like disgraced, and part of the reason I is like disgraced too, actually, because of the sort of um, irony of the fact that you know she's the one who's involved in the scandal. Yeah, she's the one disgraced. In reality, but he wants to. She wants to put him in that position that. You know, yeah, and join the ranks of. I quite like as well. Join the ranks of. Uh, but how do we capture the tawqid of it? I mean, I know for sure is a go-to, but is there other ways we can do this? The tawqid technically is one degree less than the previous one. Right. So that's, I swear. So we're not going that far. But we've kept, you know, this it falls into the same, you know, fi hayiz al-tawqid huna. 
I swear he will be imprisoned and join. So the swear uh, extends okay, to the both. Okay. Now, did we capture the subtlety between Noon uh, Thaqila or Noon uh, no, no, but, but we did so kind of capture do. a lessening of the degree because it's coming after. Yeah. And so In fact, if we did add an emphasizer, it might make it stronger than the first because it's carrying over the effect of the first plus the second. You could say he will be disgraced and he'll join the... Sorry, imprisoned and he'll join the ranks of the disgraced. That slightly... Uh, uh, the itnab might help. The recurrence of he. I swear he will be imprisoned and he'll join the ranks of the disgrace. I like that because it is a distinctly separate sentence, not clearly martuf because of the change in the, the, the intensity of the verb. So the, yeah. I, that, that and, and if you say and join the ranks of the disgrace, then definitely you get the sense that that's because of being imprisoned. Whereas and he'll join can then possibly be a separate, be a separate issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ready to move on? So there you go, the one you were criticizing me about. And yes, do you have the Walaqad. do you have the insert um, Arabic tool inside insert the Aya tool or no? You're like um, still in 1987. This is a Google document, so oh, no. Haram alik. Okay, thirty three. Okay. So you're going to speak a kind of draft for us to start with. Okay, let's let me just spitball it. Mm. Okay. Qala <laughs> I'm stuck already. He he cried out. He declared. He he said. I mean we go with he said. Yeah, so what's generally understood here he Pled? is he, he he he's saying it to Allah or he's saying it within himself. And so he, it's a different kind of saying. He pled Pled, is that really a word? Yeah. Pleaded? Pleaded. That's what I said, pay attention. Pleaded? Pleaded. Pleaded. He, he, yeah, okay, well, let's start with he said, and I'll he see said. if we, mm -hmm. okay. Rabbi Sijnu. Mm. I don't know why master. I like, I, I, I don't know why I like master of mine. I don't know why. I Here. also don't know why. Because uh, it's desperate. Ma my master. Should we, do we have to say my master? Do you think it's no, my master? I think master because I think it, there's a brevity in it already. Yeah. Although it does mean my master, yes. Yeah. Prison is dearer to me. I don't think more beloved is going to work. Maybe we find something better than dearer, but... So again, this is what we're doing here is a starting point, which then we can think, okay, how do we turn this into, you know, how do we mold it into something that is dearer to us? Prison is dearer to me. Prison is dearer to me from what they call me to or from what they invite me Not to. From, from that, that in English. Dearer to me than what they're inviting me to. Okay, so we, we can start by uh, molding this sentence before we move All to right. the next. What do you think? Yeah. So, does somebody made a comment that sounds really thought through. Is it possible to introduce some punctuations in the traduction? Oh, that's the French word for trans translation. Okay. To accentuate the intensity of the tawfiq. I, I don't know about that. Okay, so for example... Um, we we can uh, make something bold or italic or underline. Yeah. But the difficulty is, well, I mean, we can do that, but we'd have to make sure that it's published in a place where those things are maintained. Yeah. Because once you stick it online, then it goes into different sites and you lose those things. So it's hard to depend on those things. Right. You could do it all caps. That's the way that you can keep it safe. That's ugly, though. So, well, yeah. so dearer, um, some some are suggesting prefer. Sure. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of discussion about you know the sense of hub. Of course, there's no hub at all towards what they are calling him towards. So, right. So, so this is the meaning of preference. At the ala babi, as they say like that. Yeah. Um, so I prefer, you know, as they say, So so in that in that sense, it would be master prison is preferred preferable. So 
أحب ولا then to turn it into a, a way that we say I in English prefer. I prefer yeah yeah or even I choose no no I choose let's say because he's I'd he's rather prefer. he's not making I'd rather let's try that prison I'd rather have prison is it okay to say I'd rather prison It can pass in some in some varieties of English. I'm saying I'd rather prison than what they're writing to me. I think it's very smooth. I I, I do like it, but I I know that a lot of people will look at it and say this isn't this. It doesn't the, have a have. The, the grammar ain't grammar. Ain't. I'd rather have prison. I'd rather imprisonment, not I'd rather prison. <laughs> I mean, so then we're we're using the word rather, mm-hmm. like it's a verb. I prefer prison over. Yeah, it is an ism tafdil, so like there is a preferential thingy going on here. Yeah, I mean we could go exactly that. I'd prefer prison. Could prison be looked at as a must? I'd, pref- and I'd prefer I'd... it too. You could say I'd prefer it to. I'd prefer prison. Well, to I'd what prefer. Were. Would it be okay to say I'd rather imprisonment? So in the other qara, uh, the qara of Yaqub, is. Rabbi sajinu ahabu ilayya. But when you have a sajin, then it's the prison. And a sajin is prison, imprisonment, the master. Mm. Okay. But so if we're sticking to translating a sajin, then. I don't know. I really like I'd rather prison. Now, this is bad English. I would rather be prisoned. Be imprisoned. Yeah. I mean, like I say, we welcome, we welcome the comments. But yeah, please no. try to. No, no, no. Be sure. Let, 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 let's troll them. It's fine. No, no. I don't. I think just the point. <laughs> okay, you troll. Okay. Yeah. My my point is, um, you know, we're gonna we want to pay attention to what people are suggesting. So yeah. feel sure, and be clear. Yep. yep. And check. And be ready to be. You know, check something before you know throwing it in. Wrecked. Check before you get wretched. <laughs> so there's a soccer suggestion. <laughs> um. So I, I'm voting for. I'd rather. So let me let me do a little. I'm, I'm going on the side doing a little Google search. Uh, I'd rather than. Let's see if we can find. I'd is I had or I would rather. You you normally say I'd rather something than. Yeah. You do, you do say in English, you know, I'd rather go to prison than. But we say, yeah. I'd rather prison. We're counting on this, you know, this. Uh, I'd rather ice cream than chocolate. As opposed to, I'd rather eat ice cream than eat chocolate. I don't, is it bad English? We need to talk to an English teacher. I mean, so, it doesn't sound grammatically correct. I agree. Yeah, that. at the end of the day, it's sort of like there's very, very technical correct, and then there's, okay, what kind of works spoken. within spoken. And I think this does sometimes come, but it's maybe too uh, local. Like, you know, it might sound good in your locality and not in others. I think I'd prefer prison to what there is is a safer yeah, option. I'd, okay. a more, it's a more universal option. Then we should we say I'd or should we just say I prefer? I'd, I think. Yeah. Because he's not saying, oh, Allah, I really love prison. Please give me it. Got it. Yeah. But it's like, if I must choose one of these things, it would be prison. How about we use all the words we just learned? I'd rather prefer, like, loved, prison, imprisoning to word. Okay, anyway. I'd prefer prison to what they're inviting me to. To what they're inviting me to. Yeah. Yeah, their own ani ilay. What they're inviting. So inviting could be calling. Yeah. Let's see if we can call up some should, should it be more aggressive than inviting? Mm, tempting. Inciting. Yeah, inciting me to. But then inciting means that they're succeeding. Inviting means they're not no, attempting to incite is different, you know? Hmm. What they're enticing me to or trying to entice me to, but that's, you know. Inciting, I don't think necessarily means that it's working. 
enticing sounds more like that he finds it enticing. Mm. Although he says, you know, the rest of the ayah is there, of course. Yeah. We can go with the generic calling me to. I think I prefer calling. Yeah. Because we talk about a siren call. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move forward. I prefer present to what they're calling me to. And if you don't ward off their ward their scheme off ward their scheme away from me. So we t- did Sarafa Anhu before. What did we do with Sarafa Anhu before? Kadalika Lina Sarifa Anhu Su? Yep. Uh, Let me look it up what I number it was. We did that to steer evil and indecency if away from If you don't steer their, their scheme away from me. Hmm. I don't know. It feels like ward off or swat away, redirect. Divert. Divert. I wonder why we went with steer before. That's quite unusual. Hmm. Steer away, maybe. Yeah, we did steer evil and indecency away from him. So he must have liked that. Okay. Now, if you don't direct away, so what would be the reason for not using the same word in both places? We could. Why not? So I'll start with steer, but then if I think if one is changed, they both change because it's the same word Agreed. and the same usage and no difference at all. Yeah. Okay, right? So Anni yeah. If you don't steer their scheme away from me. I don't mind it. We have Anni, which is brought forward. Them, yeah. So that's the kind of thing that you know, if you don't steer ding 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 makes us pay attention. Not that it's a particularly uh, unusual looking, but still the taqdeem I think is uh uh, like he's 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 maybe he's drawing attention to himself in his vulnerability at this point. Yeah. Uh, how do we how do we highlight that top theme here? Let me try something a little bit different. And here I'm I'm leaving the steer because the steer needs from uh, away it needs away mm-hmm. as well. Run into the same problem. It's the same. Yeah, I, I had some flash of inspiration, which then went away. I was almost thinking it's like it's almost like saying for me. Yeah. Even though it's Anni, yes. Yes. But I'm just saying because of the taqdeem of it is like on you know for it's me on my behalf. Especially for me, yeah. Mm-hmm. So even this might seem strange, a ver for me, their scheme, or almost like thwart for me. But thwart is maybe like, you know, yeah, different words are used squash, for that. Squash, yeah. Uh, jazz actually, you know. Divert their plot away from me. No, no, I don't know why we read that. If, now, if you don't overt for me their scheme, if you don't re- direct their scheme away from me, you don't steer their scheme away from me. See the, the in English here the when you brought the prepositional phrase for me earlier, mm-hmm. it didn't really do anything. Not in English. Like it did something in Arabic, but it didn't do anything in English. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't avert their scheme away from me, it was practically the same as don't avert away from me, avert from me their scheme. Yeah, I don't think we should go this way. And avert wants from is the for. I'm putting for a deliberate reason, but it might not come through. Yeah. for the reader. Are you happy with now? Again, it's yeah. a contextual now. Yeah, it's a contextual now. Yeah. So, we'll keep this for the time being. Yeah. If you don't steer their scheme away from me, I. I think I want to say I could. I don't because not I might. Or I might, but rather than I will, you know, because you could say 
إلا أصبوا إليهن. Of course, you can, you know, you can translate, translate it very directly. I say, I, I say I might. Now this is the hard part. Aspoiling. Mm. Mm. So they just they explain this as uh, amil, amil ilayhinna. Saba yasbu. Let's look at uh, Jabal for a second. On Saba yasbu. Let's go to the good good mountain. We call him good good mountain because his name is Hassan Hassan Jabal. Actually, we have a theme Gerd. tune for the Gerd. Gerd. We, we, we we do have a theme song for it. <laughs> to do that in a live stream. Yeah, we can't. We can't. We go, go, go mountain. Good, good mountain. Mine, mine's different than his. Mine's better. So I have pages. I have searches. Actual real pages. Yeah, you know what? I have it at home in Texas. It's not even coming up. Or oh, did he put it in their well? It would be Saad in the Saad Baal. Yeah, Saad Baal well. المعجم الاشتقاقي. There we go. So for those who are not acquainted with uh, the wonders of the Good Good Mountain, this is المعجم الاشتقاقي المؤصل لالفاظ القرآن الكريم. Yeah. الصبي من السيف. And what happens here is he, he focuses on you know how does the meaning as it appears in various words and various ayat. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna how take does the that, screen share away for a little bit while we're reading this. Yeah. How does that relate back to what we can consider the core meaning of uh, of the root, right? So we've got words like sabi. Yeah. We've got words like saba. You know, okay, what's what's dhuba? Should we look that up? Yeah, tarafu tarafu Oh, okay. So the the side of the sword, the edge of the sword that isn't sharp, hmm. right? Uh, he has the hardest vocabulary in his dictionary, I swear. Okay, I'm going to just have a dictionary yeah. open so, for his dictionary. So then we can go into our lane. Uh, let's see. You want to open up lane? I'm doing that while I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So again, paper copy, Edward Lane's uh, Arabic-English lexicon, cameraman not paying attention to the focus. So uh, Saad, okay. So, you know, you have to know if these things take time, you know, that's why I yeah, well, only do things in a live stream, but, you know, looking at things. That's what you guys signed up for, us doing the work and you guys watching like a nature documentary. Now you see the following nerds at work perched in their desk. I, let me get, are they, they approach the incline, page? Incline. 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 I'm just guessing that the comments look like that right now. Okay. We know what the translation say. That's fine. He was a youth, a boy, Saba'a. Uh, mm. He was or became youthful, ignorant, or foolish or silly. A siba, a shawq, desire. Or he indulged in amorous dalliance. Goodness, we need an English dictionary now. A sense in which the verb, more especially with siba'a. But he inclined to ignorant or foolish or silly and youthful conduct. So tasaba yatasabu tasabin is to manifest passionate love and desire. I did not know that yet. I mean, so there's a lot of discussion around the word sabiun as well. Right. And sabun. Now the reading, the qira'ah. Yeah. That also can be linked to this sense of inclining. انحدار او ميل متدرج الى اسفل ومن ذلك الصبي الولد من لدن يولد الى ان يفطم في صغر بدنه بالنسبه للبالغين فهو منخفض كالمنحدر ولميله كما قال ابن جني 
اي تعالي. ابن جني yeah. ابن جني سوري امم ميك سنس كيف نكلم من كان في المدينه صبيه ومنه صبت النخله مالت الى الفحال البعيد منها الراعيه صبت صبت الراعيه امالت راسها فوضعته على في المرعى وصاب رمحه امال صبر سنانه الى الارض للطعن به وصبى الى المراه we might get it closer now uh, مالا okay so there is a there's a th- there's a theme of inclining yeah, leaning so you got the point of a sword and then just below that the part where it just leaves the the sharp edge of the sword you know, just from that's the point the, just that part there. yeah yeah that's the that's the sabi of it hmm. and so the verb saba he's just basically translating inclined وَالصَّبَاكَ الْفَتَى رِيحٌ تَهُبُّ مِنْ مَطْلَعِ الشَّمْسِ إِذَا اسْتَوَى اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ تَسْتَقْبِلُ السَّحَابُ وَتُوزِعُهُ بَعْضَ عَلَى بَعْضٍ بعض بَعْضَهُ عَلَى بَعْضٍ حَتَّى يَصِيرَ كِسْفًا وَاحِدًا هَذَا جَمْعُ التَّكْبِيسِ وَرَكْمٌ مِنْ أَعْلَى إِلَى أَسْفَلَ فَهُوَ مِنْ بَابِ الْحَدْرِ وَالصَّبْوَةُ جَهْلَةُ الْفُتُوَى وَاللَّهُ امم <تصفيق> So the two inclinations that I'm seeing in Jabal's dictionary are bias or inclination or leaning and childhood. Like childishness, immaturity. Those are the two things that, that are coming. I don't know what you're getting out of lanes. Um, but it's not two things though. I mean, he's, he's putting them all under the sense of yeah. inclination. But inclination. The, how does the sabi fit into that? So I would say this is difficult because we're talking about a prophet of Allah, right? Mm. So we have to be careful in words we choose for him, alayhi salam. Um, I might be immature, immaturely inclined towards them. Hmm. I mean, a lot of the times, you know, something comes from somewhere. It's, a, it's the etymology of the word. It doesn't mean that it directly carries that meaning or it has to be translated with that meaning. Right. But, you know, where possible, we, we would, you know, the reason why we're asking this question really is because this is not a word which appears a lot in the Quran. Right. So it's like, why would he use this word? Or why is this word placed in the quotation from Yusuf A.S. Mm-hmm. as opposed to some other word. That's right. So the basic meaning is, I would incline to them, that is I would respond to them and I would do what they say. So there's there's two things here that I want to bring to your attention. So asbu um I will incline towards them and maybe embedded in that in a childish way, meaning in, in, in without restraint, because the idea of inclining and the idea of child inclining towards something, leaning towards mm. something, um, wanting something is because they don't, they don't have the restraint or understanding, right? So they don't have the maturity to stop. That's why I was inclined towards the, the, inclined towards the word, the idea of immaturity. But then even what أَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ جَهَلْ as an antonym of aql is a lack of restraint you know acting mm-hmm. in an uncontrolled way is your battery almost dead you're scaring me yeah someone can stop me take take yasin's power supply i've got a power supply so let's see what others have done and maybe it'll inspire us to not do what they did or or to do with it. At least Don't point us in just some direction. Study. Yeah. Let's find out what we find in other translations. Okay. So let's have a look. Have a, have a look. Uh, I shall youthfully incline unto them. Okay, that just doesn't fit. But he's got the, you got the two words that I was thinking about, but... Yeah, but I was just trying to see in, uh, in Jabal whether he really um, has a sense. Where does he put the sabi? Uh, sabi? 
Ah, okay. Why is he, is, is he called? In the Sigari Badini, he is the same as the Balagini, he is the same as the Balagini. Or why is he the same as the Jinni? Why is he the same as the Balagini? Why is he the same as the Balagini? He is always clinging. Just Stuck fascinated things. by things and running after things and just, you know, kind of hasty and rash. I don't know if that fits with the citation I think he might mean that he's just clinging on to other things and leaning on other things because he can't stand on his own. Okay, but the point is that he doesn't see that as a core meaning. He doesn't see childhood as a core he, he meaning sees male as the core such meaning. that we have to put that into yeah in translation you know unless we had a different take on it yeah um so i shall play the youth with them says rodwell uh i shall yearn towards incline into them inclined towards them i should in my youthful folly feel inclined towards them so a lot of people felt that they want to incorporate the, the sabi aspect um some said yield to them. Mm, that's a good word. Which, to be honest, is a very good word. It's the it, it, it's it's the best in terms of the sense of inclination. Yeah. Um, yield to their allure. Incline unto them, attracted to them. Uh, feel inclined towards them. What's the word that you might use for a child who yields to your instruction? Succumb. It's a, mm. it's a, it's a synonym of yield. I'm not sure that it has anything. I don't know if I want to. I, I still feel there should be an, an aspect of this word. Why choose this as opposed to amil ilayhinna? Mm -hmm. You know, um, why asbu ilayhinna? Because there's an aspect of losing your um, sense of restraint as an adult, mm -hmm. and being childish in your pursuit of something. Where you're not considering kids pursue things without thought of consequence, right? So mm -hmm. they become immature and unrestrained in their inclination towards something. I want it. I want it. I want it. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. and there's it's the the power of this phrase is temptation can make a person that way. Temptation can make a person lose them their mature self, and well, they're not thinking straight. They're thinking like a child that's got a toy. And just wants it, wants it, and not think about the consequences. Mm. Like a kid running towards a fire because he wants to touch it. But you know what? Um, the the other sense that was discussed here is kal munhadir. Munhadir is like inclining down the way, right? So that was a general image. Yes, that was written, yes, right? yes, yes. So then also she has said, "Wala min as So he'll mm. be brought low, or what did we put in the end? Uh, so they'll pull me down, kind of thing. Discuss. Right. Yeah. So that's where succumb actually, especially if you look at the etymology of it, yeah. has a sense of bring low, overwhelm. It means to lie under. It comes from sub, fubare in Latin or something like that. So it's to do with lowness as well. So okay. succumb actually has some uh, usefulness in that. Hmm. So quiet, I'm just going to write that. Okay, write it quietly. I'm going to share the screen again so that the whole world sees your quietness. I mean, write things that kind of thing. Listen. I prefer prison to what they're calling me to. Now, if you don't steer their scheme away from me, I might succumb to them. Yeah, okay. Acceptable. Well, someone said fall for them, so, you know, in a hidar sense. Yeah. But succumb doesn't have foolish intent. He doesn't have foolish intent anyway, so I think that. But, I, I think but that was the idea was that sabi people are thinking that it's foolish, but yeah, they, I still inclined. think there is something to it, but it may be secondary. I mean, so this, so, this so, is so where. Is, but, but I guess what what where I see the relevance of it is that he is a young man. I might foolishly succumb to them. I would be satisfied with that. I don't know if you would be. To me, it's too many, too many things. I think we need a little bit things here. Is Look, happening. the foolish is already uh, covered in. Min al-jahilin. 
let me show you something. So in the the, the meaning of al jahilin yeah, the scholars have said that some people, you know, it can mean a lack of uh, knowledge. Uh huh. In which case, it couldn't apply to him except that if I was someone who didn't act on my knowledge. Uh-huh. Or it's the opposite of uh, Hakim, you know, I mean, a Sufaha, which is the foolish. How does Musa Isam use it when he says, A'udhu billahi anakuna min al-jahileen? My reading of that was from what I studied. I will, I will lose my temper. I will lose control over my emotions. But that's, but the losing temper is not the sense here. Losing your control over your emotions is. The common thread here is one who doesn't control, one that doesn't show restraint. But that's also a Hakim is someone who places everything in its right place. Right, okay. So it's not far off from the from the same point that's being made. Let me let me try something just to... You know. Hack away. Mm-hmm. So, I'll uh, now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this this formula and way of speaking is very common. We're seeing the min followed by the fa'ilin. This is me trying something right here. Like. Yeah. What's the last word? Parsan. Yeah. And any foolish fool. Like any fool. Hmm. So it might be just too idiomatic and it's people too will, idiomatic, will, yeah. will, it's will, too far. Will, will lose sleep about this. But the point is, min al jahilin bidalika and by doing that, it's not a separate point. Asbu ilayhinna. You can use thus there. Thus. I might be I might succumb to them. And thereby, that's too intel, too too eloquent for a stressful situation. Yeah, and, uh, and too and, formal, and yeah, uh, and, yeah. Not, and not the the real point here. Two uh, might succumb to them. Maybe not even use and. Put a comma there. Might succumb to them. Becoming like. And be from. What what are what's the word for people who don't have restraint? Um, and be unrestrained and controlled. Mm. I mean, foolish, I, I suppose, is like that. But to be, I mean, to be rash, uh, to be hasty, and be rash. Impulsive. Impulsive. Impulsive is a, a good, good word. word. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I think that if we if we find a way to work that into the sentence. Let's say like the impulsive. Yeah. The, the, the like thing people will also say, you know. I don't know if that's too much of a problem because I don't think so. is, is is really not far at all. Yeah, be, be like, like the, the other impulsive people. Yeah. If I am impulsive, I'd be like them. Yeah. yeah. So I know it's kind of unusual and be impulsive, yeah. <laughs> be like the impulsive. So it means... I might succumb to them and be like the impulsive. I don't mind it. Reckless, uh, yeah. Uh, Jahil may not be so reckless, but it's definitely impulsive. Yeah, so again, if, if, if we see it as, you know, basically those who lack. Because the, the impulsive thing fits very nicely with the asbu ilayhinna as well. Yeah. Yeah. I still think childishly succumb to them or um, foolishly succumb to them or... I, I wish there was a better word, like just not mature. I, I just think immature. if English doesn't have the word that has all these senses, then it's just it's over translating to stick another word in. Can you at least acknowledge my request and put a little footnote that there may be an element of foolishness or childishness or immaturity?
Hmm. Here we go. So I might succumb to them and act like the impulsive. I actually, it's it's a good translation. I've I changed to be like to act like. But then act impulsively. Just, I don't know. You just feel like okay, we've lost the the knowingness of it. Yeah, I think be like is that was good. Or become like the impulsive. That's okay too. And you know the, the 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 blue wavy line doesn't like it, but that's fine. It doesn't. It's okay. Bill Gates can. Okay. Go translate. I like all things. So you're gonna see things in process, dude. You have no Quran. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a piece of internet history that just got brought back up. Okay, yep, yep. So, you know, we we will receive, you know, comments and, and think about these things some more. Unleashed. And, and inshallah, we hope to. Oh, it's nearly time up. Yep, you know, yep we did two hours. Yep, yeah, we're back to our normal speed. <laughs> you know, your, your whole optimism of we're going to finish Yusuf in like six days and we're going to finish the rest of the Quran in three weeks. No, yeah, now your reality check. Hi. Let's go to the next aya. All right. I looked at your schedule. I was like, <laughs> we're going to finish with you. So. <laughs> at least some parts are easier. Except for the fa. Thus, therefore, then, you like then. So, I know you like then. So, or so. So. so his nurturing master did respond to him. I like the did there. Okay. Because okay. of the Tehlim of the Hood. Okay. And what do you do with the second fa? And? By? Yeah. Or translating the second verb with an ing does respond to him steering. Yeah, but I don't think that would add that any. just too uh, halia, right? Add, add any taste to this. I could have the away again, but. Sometimes you feel because it was there. Shooting their scheme from him. Yeah. Yeah. Even it could lose the previous away. Steer their scheme from me. Then I like divert better. I mean, it's fine, but it's just we used steer before, remember? That was go back and divert that one. You want me to just change divert? Yeah. You... <laughs> <laughs> yes, change, change divert, please. This is your this is your kind of humor. I'm just throwing it back at you. You're getting better. Improved. Good. Money, money, money. Okay, where did I where did I have this? Can you just search steer? No. <laughs> Don't do it, steer evil. We did it that way to divert evil and decency from him. From him. Okay. Okay. I, I'm sorry, we must have had some reason for steer, but why did you choose the word? Why did we choose divert? So his nurture master did respond to him by stealing their scheme or diverting. This came from him. Yes. Inna hu hu al sami al alim. Four. Yeah. Ultimately, the. Why ultimately? Because hu al sami. The khabar is ma'arif bilam. Then there's a hu. Inna hu hu al sami al alim. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. He, it should be distinguished from innahu sami'un alim innahu mm -hmm. huwa sami'un he is ultimately or he is above all 
you know, like there's something should be there. Okay, I know we, we, I will hit it too, but I'm just I'm just putting something to also yeah. Alim is uh, and the way. I don't know. I don't hate it. It's creative. For he is the true hearer and knower. Now, of course, people could do that for every al, but here it's because of well, the there's a there's a khabar and so look the the, in the, 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 the this is Samir al Alim. This is the, uh, the lam is istighraq here of some well, kind. But for he is truly the hearer and knower, and it's not because we just like every inna we just stick a truly. There's too many trulys. Truly, yeah. But it's true. He is the true hearer and knower. Certainly, he, comma, he is the of him. Is the he? Mm-mm. He is the he. Mm-mm. He is the true hearer and knower. Is not a bad translation because the al is being highlighted with the word true. And the the who the in, in some sense too. No, the one who he you know is a kind of exclusivity aspect yeah yeah who was Samir Ali yeah okay question um, relevant question how do we capture the taqdeem of anhu in kaidahunna sarf anhu kaidahunna which we we failed have, to do multiple times which we had in the previous ayah as well right tasrif anni yep it's been happening. Hmm. Have we failed every time? It just makes the English awkward. I don't know. We're, we're For one stuck. thing, it, it is a quite established way of using that verb. If it happened in one place, so you know, with the preposition, if it happened in one place, you might say, okay, why is this taqdeem here? Because it happens all the time, it becomes a bit more of a norm in the Quran. Of an uh, yeah, of a norm of that expression. Hmm, maybe. Sarafa kaidahunna anhu. He is truly here. I'm not saying it's you know it would be good to observe that taqdeem. We just maybe don't have a good solution to that at the moment. Yeah. If someone has got a solution, uh, hey, if you guys want to suggest solutions to the taqdeem problem in sarafa anhu, and uh, it's in its multiple uh, occurrences, where you can think about it tonight. Because we can certainly say I mean, very easily say they respond to him by diverting from him their scheme. There's no problem with that. So that's not the... I mean, what I mean is there's no problem us thinking of that option. Mm-hmm. The question is whether... It do, does anything. Does it English. does it do something that helps us to get closer to what is done by the Arabic taqdeem? I don't, in my opinion, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Let's read what we did today. One last time. All of it. Let me try reading it. I'm dramatic. Now let's try. Um, I mean, this we just did it with the end. Okay. She said, so there you go. The one you were criticizing me about. And yes, I did try to have him give himself to me. But he held his ground. Now, if he doesn't do whatever I tell him to, I swear he will be in prison. And he'll join the ranks of the disgraced. He said, master, I'd prefer prison to what they're calling me to. Now, if you don't steer their scheme away from me, I might succumb to them and be like the impulsive. So his nurturing master did respond to him by diverting their scheme from him. And he is the true hearer and knower. For he is the true hearer. For he is the true hearer and knower. Mm. Ultimate hearer and knower. Yes, ultimate is also good. But But ultimate means last. So what is the point? I mean, not the ultimate warrior. It's the last one after you, you know, the big boss. Oh, yeah. The final. Final. I mean, it can mean the, 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 the utmost, awesomest. Yeah. Utmost. But I just don't think that's. Yeah. You know what? You know what I feel from this, you know, at the end of the ayah is like a reminder to you and me that he is the one who always hears. He is the one who always knows. So you call on him also. Yusuf called on him because he knew innahu who is Samuel Ali. Yeah. He didn't call on someone else. And that we should take from that also. You know, innahu who is Samuel Ali. He hears you, he knows Allah. you and your Like in, in in a in a time, in a place, in a situation where no one's hearing him. Allah highlights, Allah's hearing him. Hmm. And no one's gonna know the real story. 
Mm. Like they're gonna make up whatever they make up, and he's the only one who knows. Yeah, Subhanallah, so beautiful. Supreme here, I know it. It could work. It is he who is the truth. Too many words, I think. Okay, we're stopping here. We'll we'll consider other things, but um, inshallah ta'ala will pick up from ayah number what ayah to be reach? 34? So we're going to pick up from 35 tomorrow. Is there a target goal we have? What is the goal for tomorrow? Uh, it's like 10 ayahs per session. So I think, you know, we'll, we'll get started a bit faster. And I've also allowed some space in the last session. Um, we can have some spillover. But inshallah, we'll have a better pace. Okay, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. I hope you guys are enjoying this discussion. It's opening your minds up too, to different possibilities. Uh, and I hope that those of you that are students of the Arabic language are now seeing the gap between just learning grammar and just learning etymology and then switching over to another language and the multiple factors you have to take in, into consideration and how, all, all the compromises you have to make to come up with a translation and how many things are sacrificed so that you don't, you stop thinking at least, the Ummah maybe can't, but you stop thinking at least, what's the best translation? Give me the most accurate translation. The most accurate translation that captures a couple of drops mm -hmm. is what we're going to get. And somebody else will capture some other drops because they were they were stressing on other things. And that's really one of the big takeaways, inshallah, you have from this exercise and makes us all humble to why the Quran is, is in Arabic. Last comment. Somebody wrote, Ustad, why are we stressing translation so much? I'm afraid that in a couple of generations, there's not going to be any Arabic Quran. It's just going to be English or other translations. The thing is, uh, first of all, homie, relax. Uh, Allah protected this book. Uh, we don't have to. Uh, and he he decided to guard it in a way that no human being, when he says, la 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 li kalimatihi, there's no one to replace his words. That actually implies that the words that he revealed are going to be protected no matter how much human beings try to replace them or do anything else. So you don't have to worry that Muslims are going to get so in love with translation of Quran that they're going to say, oh, who needs the Arabic anymore? Uh, and people that do will, you can have some people that have that disorder and they'll fall to the wayside. Quran will stay in its place. The other thing is that um, translations have been around for a few centuries now. Like the attempt to translate the Quran in multiple languages is an ongoing thing and has been an ongoing thing. Tafasir of the Quran, commentaries on the Quran that go a lot further than the translation of the Quran have been available in multiple languages. And yet in the cultures in which they are available, the Quran is memorized, recited, celebrated in the Arabic language year after year after year. And the love of it only grows, right? So in, in fact, more people that don't know Arabic memorize the Quran in the world than people that do because the population of Muslims that isn't Arab is significantly greater. More people engage with the Quran in translation than do in the Arabic, and yet the Arabic is still sacred to us. So it's not in any danger. Uh, and we, we are not in the position, humanity is not in a position to put the word of Allah in danger. We're just not. So, inshallah, this is not something that will damage. Inshallah, if, if anything, it'll make us appreciate the richness and the overwhelming awesomeness of the of the word of Allah and how we, at the end of the day, we can only capture some drops. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks, Wabes.